If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. From the team available, how was it? Like, how was your weekend from system usage perspective? Did anybody very frankly spend some time on the system, try to set up his data and all? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Nice. So you guys are here yes. with at least the data equivalent to what I could create that day, right? Yes. Yes. It's just I I just uh, uh, not able to do that production version part, the last one. Okay. Uh, apart from it, like yeah, we just tried creating till recipe. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but production version you could not create for because you got an error or it just that you stopped at recipe part. No, uh, actually, uh, we uh, just tell you. Actually, uh, the thing is that uh, and then like while uh, setting up the recipes like these standard values, right? So uh, this has been uh, I'm not able to uh, do it. So, can you like just explain a little bit? Because that day, if you remember that we are facing some some of the other issue, right? So that's right. Yeah. So see, I figured out later that the real structure of recipe because see, I have been setting up routing multiple places. It's just a coincidence that I face a lot of projects which are discrete related. So routing is okay. a piece of cake. But the recipe part has some additional things. So what happened that day is we were not able to assign operation to the phase and so on properly. So the structure yeah, goes like this, one. right? That first of all, you define an operation, assign a particular resource to the operation and give some description what happens in the operation. Okay. Then to the same operation, you create another line which says that, okay, this is phase number 20 because I'm marking it at, as phase but it belongs to the superior operation called 10. So both of them are then interlinked with each other. Okay, this destination part is the configuration from PP side, but assign the same resource out there. Okay. So this uh, typically is like we assign phase to an operation or operation to a phase, like how it should be. Phase, phase to an operation. Yeah, phase is a, because this is a superior operation to the phase, right? So it will be an umbrella of operation under which you can have multiple phases. Right, two, three, right. four, five phases, okay. right? Okay. And if you double click after assigning, then you are easily able to assign the setup and machine these standard values because under the resource, we have already assigned a control key which says that I will need setup, machine, labor, all those things, right? Okay, okay. So, Thanks. okay. So, what I'll do, uh, you try to do that now, otherwise, we'll go to your system and set that up. Okay, in some time, because let sure. me just take, take you through the entire cycle now, because sure. recipe is yeah. one thing, correct? After recipe is production version, bomb and then bomb and production version and then PDS. So let's go there subsequently. Okay, just to make a good. Problem here in recipe. Yes, here the so, first standard value and the second standard values and Okay, then, but they they do necessarily come from the res resource, right? Because in the resource we assign control key that would determine what are the standard value requirements out here. Right? Okay. But yeah, few additional things I should uh, tell you here that okay, the res in in case of recipe after you go in change mode there is a button to say generate relationship. This one, okay. So this is this is important because now we are uh, see. Let me talk lesser and lesser about the master data structure henceforth, and talk more and more from scheduling perspective, detailed scheduling perspective, because that's the context of our entire training. Okay. So all the phases, sorry, all the uh, yeah operation phases. What exactly I don't know yet. Okay, they are connected with each other. They are in relationship with each other. For example, this phase and this operation will complete and the next one will start. So this is like end and start relationship. In case you have multiple operations, okay, so it is quite possible that you are how to process both of them parallelly and then put, put them together and something like that, correct? So what might happen is the outcome coming from this operation number 10, 10, 20, I would say both of them together, 
of this operation and phase combination 1020 is mixed with the outcome coming from operation and phase combination 30 and then outcome of mixture of both of them is as an input to the third to the third operation operation number 50 okay it's quite possible because you know this is we, we are producing manufacturing something in a process manner okay process in the sense that okay i have something in the beginning i make add something to that and it create something other then i take it to the next step and then create something else out of it right so all these sequence of some things is not to be done just like that right not to be done any time they have to follow a particular sequence and that's what we call as relationships okay so click there as soon as you create your uh, uh, recipe later and then say display relationship because i want to see i want to see what kind of relationships are created by it okay so if you click on that what does it say that okay activity 20 sub operation number 10 okay it has got the, the where is it this is a successor okay successor. no 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 I, yeah i want to see what is the predecessor for that so oh why i am i i are my relationships not generated looks like huh? yes yeah looks like because i should be able to see the relationships out here otherwise yes. how will the system know let me see okay and before that there is an option here to see the graphical representation of the relationship so you click down here before we go in it would show me that yeah see 10 20 30 40 40 none of them is connected with each other right okay. i mean 10 and 20 are inherently connected this is operation this is phase operation phase but 10 and 30 are not connected so how will system know when to do so with absence of a relationship if you use this recipe it would straight away create both the operations independent to each other correct in the sense on the shop floor also people will not know that i have to start both the both the things later on okay yeah and see the relationships here matter in terms of your delivery your manufacturing lead time because if the operation number 1 i am suggesting that it takes 100 hours operation number 2 takes 100 hours okay so if they are connected by end start relationship then they would take in total the plan order would take 200 hours to complete but if i am not connecting them then both of them will be scheduled at the same time and then it would disturb your entire detail schedule because with this sort of relationship it would say that i i can finish this plan order in 100 hours both of them are running parallel simple right so that is why these things are many times uh, they are actually a bigger hurdle uh, from your um, Uh, ppds project support perspective because you face such kind of issues uh, in the master data okay so now i am doing a predecessor successor selected phases no all phases and relationship view selection all of them this is finish start relationship okay um, i don't know if i need to select all of them or so but this is like if i want to create start start so ss finish start is like end start so fs then end end is like ss uh, sorry uh, ff type of relationship so these keywords matter okay what uh, sort of relationship you are going to create correct ff is finish finish fs is finish start this is start finish and this is start start so depending upon situation and see these are not the things that we would do ourselves these are coming from the engineering team of the project we no, neither sap or so right because there is some team in the manufacturing organization who is owning the bomb who is owning the recipe so they know because that is the r&d team connected with the engineering team who finalize bomb recipe and they feed it so i have seen that multiple projects they just send out excel or some sort of file i don't know that gets loaded to their engineering system and from there it gets transferred to as per system or ecc system so this is all automated way also right at many times you know as and in the ideal organization where the recipes and bombs are so complex it should happen that way manual interferences should be avoided but there are some poor clients my bad they are not poor clients but there are some clients who do not have lot of complexity so they have a dedicated master data team who get excel or email based option and then they just create this thing manually okay 
So let us do this. Now I've selected all phases. So create a successor. Let me see what happens. I will not save if it doesn't generate correctly. Okay, relationships are generated correctly. Let us display it. No, let me see graphical. Now it has generated anyway, but graphical one is a better one for me. Okay, so you see now 20 finishes and 40 starts. This is finish start relationship that has been generated, correct? I think if you yeah. go to relationships, you should be able to change this relationship type also. So this is successor. Uh, this is finish start, right? Let me see it is start start. I'm not sure if it allows me. Hopefully it did. Okay. I, I change. Perfect. Now see, this is starting, this is starting. So in a way, both of them are parallel to each other, right? So they can be started at the same time. Very important. And we are, we are, we are talking with a very simplex uh, mechanism, correct? Very simple mechanism. But in real life, and most of you are from the same project, you must see that the recipes are too complex, correct? But here, uh, we are okay here, right? You are able, to, you would be able to generate relationships, right? And once these get to PPDS, we will see how do this relationship appear in your PDS because that's important. See, we could have chosen routing also. The routing based PDS is a simple. There are no relationships. It's simple actually, literally. But the recipe based PDS is complex. So it is better we are doing it. But I would still strongly advise or if time permits towards the end of these sessions, let me know. I mean, remind me not let me know if required and if we have sufficient time, we can also create one set of master data with routing because at least you should know what are the possibilities there, right? Because many times uh, you might be designing these things also for the client, right? Whether to use routing or recipe and what sort of things and you would be say, fixing the issues as well there, okay? Yeah. All right, so now I've generated this. Let us go to the next step. I have to see whether my uh, production version is still there, so. Okay, so I've got this 0002 production version. I generated that and we have uh, assigned the bomb and routing to it. Where is the assignment? Yeah, here it is. Alternative number two and grouping number this. Thing. So before I transfer these things, let me see what is my PDS because I have to be very much sure that my PDS that's generated should have all the phases and operations and blah, blah things, right? So it should have um, I'm uh, the components and operations. So let I'm just filtering for my production version. This PDS main transaction generates the PDS irrespective of anything. So it does not actually generate it. It just displays it whole entire master data and the backend remains the same it refers to the same tables, but just displays in the form of PDS here, right? Note, I mean, these, these are some sort of transactions that you would need very frequently PDS mint. Okay. So now I'll skip this supply SNP one. Let's go to the PDS one, PPDS one. Okay. So I've got header data. This is fine, but what are the zeros? Bucket offsets and priorities are zero. Fine, doesn't matter. <coughs> Let's go to component. You should have two components, good. And these are input components. Rest and the first one is the output component. It was anyways good. Operation data. Okay. Now it looks like good one, right? Because we have got 10 and 30. Okay, and I mean the phase number 20 and 40, operation number 10 and 30. So this looks good to me, correct? Yes. I mean, you can't tell if it looks good or bad to me, but I can tell you with experience, this looks good because what we have got here is operation number 10, whose phase is 20, okay? What is the assigned resource? What is the type of capacity? and the lot size settings and all. So I'm not explaining all these things. Doesn't mean I'm skipping them. We'll go to PPDS and then explain you there because that's the place where you are going to use it. Similarly, we have got another operation which also says 40, 30 and it shows me correctly, right? So with this, I can say that the PDS is fine. So now this is the time that I should transfer the PDS to PPDS, okay? PP, this PDS is such a master data that it doesn't automatically go. What goes for the PDS is 
the resources individual the resources because we created resources we set them as advanced planning and it is sent if it was a snp based or sorry it was a apo based ppds then you would have created integration model for the resources and send them to ppds correct after that you would create the integration model for pds and then the pds will transfer okay all right but before that is everybody able to understand what i am talking about so far and you are you are good with this master data or anybody faces a problem i am okay to take a pause of 5 10 minutes so that you at least come to this level in your master data setting if anybody hasn't done and then please don't lie i will pinpoint anyone and ask him to share your screen so we transfer pdfs on his screen but uh, okay so on friday mm -hmm. i explained how you can access all these things on web okay this sort of web page where advanced planning is there and you are able to create bomb routing material what not right so you don't actually practically you do not need the gui also so you were mm -hmm. there right while i was explaining this this part how to access and what to do and all or you just missed that you don't need the gui practically as long as you got id and password to sap system you no don't need this sap logon pad based access okay 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 no no go and listen to the recording start paying attention guys mm -hmm. in the call i'm telling you yeah. if if we push or if you postpone something that today i will not study i i may may pay, pay a deep fear in the class because i can study during the day then come out of this try to finish things at the same time you know have you heard about this company nike yes is anybody right and this is to everyone so nike is the greatest company according to me and this is my personal opinion as far as i have studied the companies so nike is greatest companies in terms of their ethics in terms of their vision the guy who started nike okay he had one attitude that attitude said just do it that's the tagline even today for nike and the they they, they the, the way they have risen from the ashes that time already there were some bad, good sports manufacturers like adidas and all they were already doing pretty good in america but this guy came out of nowhere you know we keep thinking in life that okay i have to do something that day and this day and all those things right so this is the old uh, mentality you should have mentality like <coughs> i have to do it now just do it so do not uh, i mean start uh, uh, avoid pushing things to tomorrow just do it today always remember this word all right fine so um what we were doing yeah so now we are at the recipe okay so i'll finish up sending my pds okay and then i will go to someone of your screen who has come to this level because i i want to see uh what is the data set up on that screen so that i get a confidence that yes we have some data available okay fine so once the pds is there in s4 side now is the next step to send the pds to ppds okay and to do that i forget the transaction so i always remember one transaction which says sc93 because this is the place where transaction codes are created so i would like to come down here and then access any other transaction from here just based on you know the star asterisk if i don't search know about it so the transaction code and that's what is available somebody is trying in the system later but this is the transaction code to send the pds to apo okay make a note of it or else in the sc93 if you come down just search for star curto star create so curto advance create is the transaction in your apo world also it used to be curto create right curto underscore create or curto create transaction here they have just added adv just to indicate that this is advanced planning relevant on s4 hana side so this is the transaction that they have created curto adv underscore create execute good and i think many of you must be familiar with this transaction code in case you are working into apo based ppds right so you specify planning version because that's the beauty of transferring a pds even in apo world and now in s4 world is that it is possible that you can create a pds for a different planning version in the target system 
for rest of the master data as you can't do that while you send material location and blah blah no, that is. has that goes and sits in the standard planning version 000 but the pds can be sent if i had a new planning version called sim i am able to send it from here to sim version also from s4 itself or from ecc itself okay specify your material specify your plan if you know about the production version it is good enough because sometimes people do create multiple production versions and of course that is a trend you have to have multiple production versions depending upon situation okay your fact your uh, customer wise production versions can be there and so on so you specify that you do not specify that for me i will not specify anything i don't know if there are other planning versions by the way you can filter on something else okay mrp type based filter is here so this is one which is uh, unlike the other master data where uh, you just have to set the advanced planning relevancy so there you can't actually control the mrp type based filtering but here it's possible okay and then these are some types of uh, different types of production versions that are created so if it is a subcontracting related production version you need to set this up Yeah, sorry. Uh, without subcontracting, said this up, but with subcontracting, so this is including subcontracting with source info record. Okay, so let me just make a note of this. I will not go. I I won't be uh, implementing that, but I'll just make this topic to explain to you what is subcontracting. Okay, this is on twenty four July twenty. Okay, so this topic perhaps would be coming in the end, actually, after towards the end when we are about to finish the sessions. But at least you should know what happens here because the kind of master data that needs to be created is little bit different than the regular setup. So I will explain you what is the meaning of subcontracting in terms of supply chain planning system and what sort of automation is available with master data because this is possible. You know, lot of um uh, heavy engineering or say car manufacturers and all they operate based on subcontracting correct and that time they their inventory is managed by vendors also and so and so on so let's talk about it there okay and remind me if i don't talk about it okay these are some peripheral topics which are only when time permits but if at all time doesn't permit then maybe i'll talk 5 10 minutes but give you some guidelines about how to read and uh, explore it because you know the you need not to know everything in system not not everything right it is like you should just know what direction i have to follow and then explore and do it it's like that okay so material etc is given i have chosen without subcontracting because this is the plain and simple scenario but with subcontracting there are various possibilities here okay then if you just want to try whether everything is good or not do test mode extended consistency check i usually prefer because that then and there shows me in case there is any error on s4 master data then end it there lock pds in case of error i would do that because the error based pds i don't want to transfer to pds the pds so it would lock that okay delete despised usage so what does it mean that this transaction is not deleting and this transfer deletion flag these things are not deleting the pds but in case the, the 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 production version has been deleted on ppds so on s4 side and if you want to send that deletion so get the pds deleted on ppds you need to set this up that even if the pds is used in any of the plan order outside uh, in in ppds okay so usually we do not delete the master data which has a dependent transaction later system does not allow and this happens in apo but here is the facility that even if it is used you can still delete it you can still overwrite it and so on so that's what this indicates and then finally if you are transferring it first time you do absolute transfer if on a daily basis you are transferring because anyway this uh, transfer would happen every day then you would set that up a change transfer because it would just send all the changes you change any bomb you change any operation and so on those things absolute transfer sends everything from scratch correct so this is like that rimodini i was talking in the second session right initial transfer thing the you transfer everything from scratch so it would just overwrite entirely the pds on ppds side but not recommended because if in case you got 10000 pdss then every day you cannot do absolute transfer you might want to do absolute transfer once in a week or once in a month but change transfer every day so it would just carry the changes okay fine and it's saying only change pointers older than date change pointers older than so many minutes and so on so see if i say enable the change transfer correct so that time 
the system i mean just like this system okay i saw that something was changed in 2018 in fact this fg material that i am using is in 2018 if somebody created a production version change at that time and if i am transferring so i don't want to consider that because that's garbage for me correct so in that case i would select some date and time and so on but this is quite common sense you guys would be able to understand fine so let us now transfer our pds to ppds and see what happens Okay, great. So it has transferred the PDS successfully transferred. Okay, now let's see what has happened on PPDS side. So transaction code to check is anybody knows the transaction code from APO world? It's the same transaction. Got to see. Great. That's Dhanashri, right? Or uh, that's yes. Dhanashri. Got to see. Mu, provide your location, product, and exit. Okay, so I have got three PDSs. Okay, and all of them belong to different production versions. See the various production version. Yeah, in the source of supply based on the last name because the usual naming convention, automatic naming convention is name of the plant. Uh, sorry, name of the product, name of the plant followed by name of the production version. So my PDS production version. This is a production version based PDS, and it has got zero 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 one PV. rework and production version 1 so these are the old ones i did not create them right only this 0001 pds uh, production no i created 0002 right yes then why it is 0001 ah it is a description man so see production version is 0002 but the description is this one so i probably forgot to change the description it is still 0001 okay no mind but i want to still change it because i want to see whether this gets automatically transferred or i still need to transfer the pds okay so very quickly okay and let's see if i want to reload the things i don't need to go by transaction again then you can click here and then it would open up that window again and reload the pds yeah so it is not transferring okay so i'll quickly do a change transfer now change transfer no need of absolute hopefully it gets transferred okay it did not why yeah this is the one right i mean the reason for trying it is this inconsistency with the pds always appears okay sometimes it doesn't get transferred so see this is still 0001 so the description is also not transferring with the change transfer the change transfer because you know it is and this is where i am actually angry sometimes with sap because they have they have migrated the P, uh, this ppds to esporana but they haven't yet perfected it right for example if you go to that pds main transaction the gui have you seen the gui do you remember it yes. it is not perfectly made right it's so difficult to operate via go through those uh, operations and all right that window is so small so nobody hasn't literally worked on it correct from sap side similarly now i am doing a change transfer i would expect that at least that description should flow correct but description itself is not flowing because somebody who migrated the program is sap he just worked on making the the recording the changes for the operations and components that only that is getting transferred so this is very bad i thought it should at least change transfer should also consider this production yeah see anyway so i have to do an absolute uh, transfer. yeah right yeah yeah uh, actually i just want to ask that uh, here in uh, in transfer of pds right so mm -hmm. uh like the description if if it is not coming so uh, here as well we have to do raimodini uh, i mean you know mm. in order to here see 
नहीं 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 फॉर रायमोडी द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू प्रोवाइड इज इंटीग्रेशन मॉडल नेम राइट Mm-hmm. If you right. remember, and there is yes, no indication yes. model in this case, right? Then what would we provide? So there is no Raimodini concept here. No, so uh, I mean to say, like uh, this is the only way, like uh, we will be able to do it. I mean, without uh, integrating it, uh, we can rectify the PDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By rectification, you mean? By yes. rectification, you mean? Uh, all I the mean, changes like just the yes any any of the changes like you uh, as we seen right uh, that description is not going properly so, uh, in that way so there could be additional program actually i don't know because continuously in every release they send out something new that we created this program now start using and all so in case you mm-hmm. got oss access maybe you can search for that how to do a change transfer on pds okay. till last release that was the only option okay but i am sure there could be a possibility because just like you are raising this question lot of customers also raise this question to sap and then they modify it just like creating new new additional ccr sort of program correct mm, right exactly i was about to ask that is there any standard report okay okay yeah yeah so as of now i am not aware but perhaps that can be one of our homework let's find okay. it out on oss i'm sure. sure because for example the location when i showed you one transaction but yesterday i came across another transaction and i forgot to note that note that down but with that transaction you are able to send the deletion of the location correct instead of deleting the location directly so such things keep evolving and that is why your study never stops this training opens up a pandora's box for you and then now you have to continuously study and it's very easy it's it's not like uh, you know now how do i study it's an ocean and all every release sap releases the changes the new things or you know the best practices within ppds so go on to uh, sap oss uh, or universal access of that and you will yeah. be able to find that things easily okay Sure. i'll try to download something and then uh, circulate if if it's easy actually i don't know even i do not have that access but perhaps i'll find something on internet also because the best practices but in fact one thing good that we are talking about it so one thing you should note imagine you're working in a ppds implementation project ppds on esporana so usually what happens is sap provides some out of the box best practices with them and this is a trend with them because how they are selling these softwares now is plug and play sort of software that if you want to do a basic supply chain planning or basic scheduling then everything is already in that's how they say or sometimes if the software is totally new nowadays correct so in that case as a guideline or as a reference they release some down because the moment you would start a ppds project ask to your project manager or somebody that can we download the best practices so that will include a bundle that bundle will have all the test scripts that you should be executing the best possible test scripts that needs to be executed to take a end to end planning and scheduling thing so you will understand because otherwise the test scripts that you may have seen are created by somebody like us or somebody from the business side so we may not be able to think holistically sap has done that so get get those and try to go through them second is ask them for the best practices data and i can tell you this fg126 is the best practices data i don't know how i chose it i didn't know by that time but this is the finished good product coming from sap directly okay so something similar bomb routing recipe and all those things are pre set pre set up right so inst- we install the system and they are there for our reference purpose so ask for that also now even if i tell you one product that helps you know in no way because you need that excel coming from sap where all the things would be listed and then those same things would be used for testing also in the test script also so that would be helpful to you whenever you go to any project start with that thing okay sure fine so now this is not transferring what do i do i did a initial transfer also and i am fed mm-hmm. up with this yes somebody has an answer why it no, may not actually happen? i was trying to transfer but i can see only my components in the pds ah uh, okay so let's see what happened with my pds now because i haven't checked that on the pds side right so do, 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 do. i'll do one more time absolute transfer if i i had created this software it wouldn't be like this 
because and see see i mean it's not like criticizing someone but yeah. they know this is already a popular uh, module right so they just wanted right. to create that easiness right to bring it but they did not spend a lot of time because they are already selling it you are already generating revenue why would you spend time in in uh, you know enhancing it that's how it is so come on guys oh sorry this is the pds description this is not a production version description this is a pds description so is it coming from pds mint but it should come from production version still because pds mint we do not yeah, generate any in pds correct absolutely see this is the production version but there is no way but to get it from the pds see here it is updated as a production version text on s4 side this is pds mint last thing i'll check is is there any queue stuck because i am transferring something the perhaps it has generated any queue so let me check the inbound queue a master data which is unlikely because the pds got transferred why wouldn't the description be see there is nothing so i don't know then some inconsistency or so we have a section later to check the, the i mean understand the inconsistencies and all so perhaps that time we will one last trial i'll do is i'll go out of the transaction completely and then reaccess it maybe that's the thing ah it has come now <laughs> i don't have answer now what happened there okay no mind so now i'll just filter it for my production version 002 rest of them i will on mind and let me see if it looks correctly eh? i did filter right a planning version me sorry do i have a production version option here no so i am in the ppds right so i do not have that production version option okay fine so focus on here now note one thing even for 0002 on s4 side there were two pdss if you check the pds mint you are able to see snp as well as ppds pds but here i did not filter for ppds but still i just got ppds pds why because this is a ppds system there is no snp here but they have a facility out there because some customer even after going to s4 hana would still be using apo as their planning system they still be using snp correct so that time they have to transfer the pds from ppds to to snp from the s4 hana system that's why there is a provision okay let us expand it and see what has happened so i should have my com component hey yeah i have component i have operations activities and sequencing group so i've got good uh, thing i mean all the things required okay but before i go in here i just want to go to one of my um uh, diagram that i have pointed out found out for you okay so basically this is the universal structure of a pds okay you should kind of by heart or you should know this in general you know it's logically connected so no need of by hearting as well but the pds is of this sort and if something of this is missing then there is a problem correct so here is the deal you will always have a header of the pds which will contain what is the header outcome product of the pds that's what we have here this upper section is the header correct so i have got the header of the pds available correct it contains what all things it contains what is the correct name what is the production version it is created from what type of pds it is correct then it is ex the explosion based on what so this is coming from the product master right I, let let me talk about it in in a while uh, then the the type of uh, inherent master data from s4 it is recipe or routing then the validity is and all correct and then there is this minimum and maximum lot sizing also this is important uh, from source selection perspective so we will be an orders but these are generic things so these things that are available here are actually pinpointing towards the heading part header part of the pds right in general the overview right what is the source of this pds what is the validity and then what type of uh, lot sizing it is valid and so on and so on. so that is the header 
under the header we will have always one section of component one section of operations components coming from bomb operations coming from recipe or routing whatever it is okay so here is the deal i have got components i have got operations both the things i have to ensure whether they are there or not correct under operations there will be activities if you are using a recipe based pds then under operations there will be activities for routing based pds it won't be there because you haven't the activities actually are sorry my bad this this is not phase right so under operations you will always have activities correct activities like what sort of activity you are performing you are doing a drilling and so and so on okay so that would be here under activity under activity under i mean under operation there is activity and under activity there will be a mode so the mode denotes that this activity will be performed on what resource the mode is basically the resource where the activity is being performed then the activity will have a associated component that this activity would result in so and so component as an outcome or as an input and then there will be relationships also because there could be multiple activities so how are they connected how are they connected when this finishes that starts and so on so this is the universal structure of a pds you and then that is how you should also verify whether my pds transferred is correct or not so header under which there are operations and sorry dhanashree question uh, no okay so pds there are there are components and operations under operations there will be activities under activity there will be mode there will be component and there will be activity relationship and the mode will get a resource so first time if you are looking at it or even if you are looking at pds and you don't and un haven't understood this sequence correct then it is tough to connect the dots but once you know it once we go through it it is easy correct but at least the structure you should know correct and PD pds is what it is not having any sort of master data of its own it is just picking up data from any dependent erp system s4 ecc and then representing that data in a solid form in a in a particular format so my first session i was talking about apo or ppds or this supply chain system as a data model system correct my example was with the excel based uh, uh, forecasting versus the apo or ibp based forecasting both of them in the back end are using same forecasting algorithm because the sap has an invented statistical forecasting algorithm they are coming they are the mathematical algorithms invented at least 150 years 50 years or 100 years back they are still the same what sap or any other planning engine is doing is by picking packing all those input components uh, and creating a, a systematic data model to feed into that algorithm so that it gives me correct output so it is just the big data processing engine correct this master data is the same thing the input things are bomb routing and so on so that has been there since sap was into inception but that cannot be used by the planning algorithm as it is so this is like rearranging things in the way that planning algorithm can read easily and that's what it is correct so this is like a systematic organization or arrangement of those master data components that are there in s4 and that is the reason apo or planning engines came into being right because they just started organizing things because you fundamentally cannot change ecc if you if you you know sap could have uh, there are two things here sap could have or reorganized this data into s4 or in ecc itself and provided all those planning algorithms then and there so one disadvantage there is you cannot separate the consultants so all those people who are using that system they would get highly confused because everything will have two 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 sides there then you lose on one of the opportunity of selling additional software you lose on playing a lot with that software why because you have no limited space in the same system you are doing that and these are some of the things that new sort of softwares like this planning softwares came into being okay so this is the structure everybody understood the structure guys please uh, be yes. talkative yeah okay so now let's go and here so we have got components first of all header components i have got raw material 1 and raw material 2 as my input components and this is output fine so my bomb has been transferred well i also know that to create a component finish good of one quantity i'll need 10 pieces of raw mat 1 and 10 pieces here correct so 
we know about it right we set that up into bomb i i created one as a base quantity of my header and then 10 10 as a quantity for my components fine then here is a end end relationship so this not relationship it is kind of an offset so always the finished one would be required when the pds starts this would be required at the this will be available at the end whereas the raw materials would be required at start start so this offset is required now why i focused here is because the outcome of this um, the pds is plan order correct so once the plan order gets generated, it would also create some dependent demand for raw materials, correct? These raw materials should get a dependent demand so that somebody from the warehouse sends the raw material to the shop floor. But when are these required? Whether at the start of this plan order, I mean, when the plan order for FG126 is starting, whether I need the raw material at the beginning or I need them at the end or I need them in the middle somewhere, right? So that has to be specified. And that is coming from the offset that I always needed start start. Sometimes they do not need the raw material at the start start, maybe at the midway through, right? So they change some offsetting there. So I'm not going into the complication of master data that side, but for example, one material is required at the start and another material is required halfway through. You don't want both the materials to be available at the same time because you do not have space to store them at the shop floor. So that's why this offsetting come. And this straight away, the dependent demand for raw material straight away goes into another system called warehouse management system or EWM, extended warehouse management system. Why? Because you need 100 quantity of FG, so it would generate 1000 quantity of demand for raw material one and two, 1000, 1000 each. This goes into warehousing. It knows that I need at, at on this day, at this time, this much material. So it already start planning. So that planning of raw material starts happening in warehousing in the back end and the material is available because without this, you cannot start. So these systems are so interlinked with each other. Okay. Then let's go to operations. Okay, here is some problem looks like, and I know. So we have got just operation number 10. Okay, this naming convention also, let me explain later. But what I have got now is, what is the superior operation surface, sorry. So I have got 10 and 20 both. So this is a operation and this is a phase of it, fine. But what about the second operation, guys? I have created two, right? And this is the same problem that you're facing, Dhanashri, right? You, your operations are not transferring. Yeah, I can only see the components, no operation activities or sequences. Right, nice. So see, and uh, why it is happening is because your resource, your resource may not be set up correctly for the work scheduling. Uh, sorry, that, what is that? Uh, yeah. View, scheduling view, okay. Because the resource is sent to PPDS, okay. Because we created a capacity on the resource, it is sent. But if you do not specify the formula and the capacity, then the resource is not, uh, is not usable by the PDS for scheduling purpose. And that's why SAP does not send it at all. So these things are must. Okay, so for my RES one, I have set that up, but let me see for my RES two. And please do it right away on your system. So see, there is no formula assigned. I have just created a capacity. So let me assign a particular formula, which says SAP 002, same formula, machine time, right? And if you can display that formula also, it would have the same calculation machine into quantity divided by base divided by splits. Same formula that we assigned to the capacity. Say, okay, fine. And now I will do the transfer of PDS again. And I will do the absolute transfer. I don't have time to experiment. Fine, and let's go back. Reopen the transaction, okay? Because I don't believe now SAP that that other box would help me. Okay. See, now both of both the things are here, right? First operation, second operation. Second operation will have second phase. First operation will have first phase. 
okay so the master data has to be set up correctly that way okay so now for the first operation under first phase what we saw in my diagram is under the operation there is activity which is phase under which there will be more component and relationship so let us open that phase and see if there is activity or not okay so under the phase they have a activity the activity is a produce activity because what we uh, the resource type of resource that we assign is the production resource to that correct so the activity has got anything else scrap is there and i have i'll be talking about it later subsequently and then lot sizing is there so let me see if i can open the activity i should have mode under it so see under the activity i have a mode component and relationship so i have under the activity mode component and relationship so under mode we have got the res1 resource assigned right this is the duration because we may have specified under the recipe we would have specified that to produce one base unit of that finished good how much time of this resource is required correct so let me see that very quickly how much time we have specified okay so one hour right for this see in the under the header of this one the, the base quantity would have been specified as where is it material base quantity as one right for this for this recipe and for this base quantity i'll go to need two raw materials which would need 10 pieces each okay but to get this 10 pieces i have to process two operations and each of this operation is going to take one okay for the operation also the base quantity is specified correct now it will get proportionately multiplied with each other but to produce this 100 i would need what i would need one hour of standard time the machine timing correct so that one hour gets translated into 3600 seconds in ppds side the you specify anything out there that would get converted into 3600 right and again uh, the break and etc etc is there but under the mode let me see under the mode there will be something else that says capacity requirements of the mode so some additional uh, right whether the consumption is variable or if the consumption is fixed and so on so all those settings are here let me take a yeah. pause there is a basic difference i mean let's just focus on these two uh, hey, uh, what to say uh, two fields okay one is not continuous consumption sorry i need to go into resource consumption this is different bucket not even bucket consumption sorry, bucket consumption goes into uh, snp they haven't removed it so here is the resource consumption sorry i was in the right place chai it says continuous resource consumption my bad okay so there there is this difference between variable and fixed i will give you just enough information uh, not to confuse further so now it says that um, i'm seeing one more inconsistency in the master data but we'll fix it later so there is a difference between a fixed consumption and variable consumption for this resource can somebody logically try to tell me what would be the difference between a fixed and variable consumption logically see this is a resource under one operation for one pds now i am going to create a plan order on this pds correct that plan order will be consuming some capacity of the resource but i can specify whether it is a fixed consumption or a variable consumption so logically what does it mean anybody try please nobody chalo i have to pinpoint names then chavet chavet agib can you you are keeping quiet yes, yeah see there is noise but doesn't matter try to answer the due to forecast due to due to forecast, forecast. uh no wasim ali Do you want to try? 
like uh, fix means uh, uh, it will take the I mean particular value. So and variable means uh, it will uh, I mean form modify uh, I mean according to the situation. I think. So in your entire explanation, just replace that word situation with demand quantity. Yes. So sir. what Akib said and uh, what you said connect both the things. So what does it mean is if the consumption is variable, it means that you have specified that this particular operation will take one hour to produce 100 quantity. So if the quantity to be produced is 1 million, then accordingly your time will increase. So the length of resource consumption will be varying, will be increasing based on the quantity. But when you say fixed consumption, it means that irrespective of your total quantity to be produced, this is going to take only two hours. Example, best example is a uh, is a oven, microwave oven. You hit something, whether you are hitting 10 quantity or 100 quantity, you're going to hit it for three hours or 24 hours, right? So that is yeah. the fixed consumption of the resource, correct? So depending upon situation, what both of you said is connected, interlinked together, but they mean the same thing, right? One side variable and fix, correct? Now, what I am confused here is for this resource, I set up the quantity based consumption because the formula said what my formula in the resource said that it is the depend. You remember the SAP 002 formula. It says one thing that multiply by quantity and multiplied by the operation duration and so on, something like that. So it should have been transferred at variable, not fixed. Here it is fixed. It means that this is going to take only fixed amount of time, only one hour. Let me go to the second uh, resource and see whether it's the same there. Okay, let's expand this. No, not this window. This window, okay, so let's expand this. And it has got activity again, the second phase has got activity of same 100 pieces as base quantity. And it has got mode. 3600 similar and it is again a fixed consumption. This is strange. Did I assign wrong resource? I should have got a variable consumption ideally, but okay, we'll leave it here itself. We'll see what, what is the side effect of it uh, on uh, our scheduling. Okay. You, if anybody of you is able to get the variable consumption, let me know. So we will compare our resource with your resource. Fine. And then, okay, under the mode, we were here, right? We were here, activity may, we have seen mode and resources and all. Let's see the associated component and the relationships also. So that is here. So the components would be both because we haven't actually connected one component. Where is it? Yeah, the bottom. Achha. So component is the outcome component. So after you finish up your first operation, you will get output as this one. And we should have mentioned it. This is an output. Okay. And this is now coming as an end end relationship. So at the end of this activity, we should get it here. And let's see the relationships also. Okay. So now the relationship says that 20 and 40 are into end start relationship. They are resource dependent. Okay. And some other settings. Okay. So this is important, right? But because when you convert this to plan order, the plan order should be able to follow the relationships maintained. And uh, uh, there is one option here, which says minimum inter operation time and maximum inter operation time. Okay. So this is important because now you will say that activity, this ends, this starts fine. But then between that end and start, how much time required? Maybe I'll end one today and start tomorrow the next one, right? Doesn't work like that, right? You're, you're doing a chocolate manufacturing process. So as long as your first activity chocolate mass is hot, you need to go to the next step. It is in a liquid phase still, and then you mix it, mix that up. So these minimum and maximum operations times are specified down to them. And this is the setting that is handled via integration enhancements. Okay, it doesn't, there is no option. There is one option actually on the, on the, There is one option on the routing also, sorry, on the recipe side also, but it doesn't work in my, one of my project I was trying, it was, it doesn't work. So we do one thing that 
these maximum and minimum interoperation times are specified during the interrogation we simply enhance the body and then put it here okay but as a, there are ways i mean the only thing uh, only intention to tell you that either you can try via the recipe routing or you can try via integration and then update here so if you specify just 5 minutes then it cannot be an infinite duration of time and this is so important that you have got two orders okay one order you haven't started at all which is only happening on the resource 2 and another order is completing from resource 1 to resource 2 so you will prioritize this order because the only time that you can stop in between two operations is 5 minutes so other order has to be delayed right so that's where this interoperation times come into play okay there are some other fields here which we will come back as soon as we go into demand set up some demand okay because the fields like the minimum and maximum lot sizing values and all so that is important from your source of supply selection perspective uh, so i have yeah. one question like yeah. uh, since you have uh, told about this interoperation so there could be a possibility that uh, if we have multiple phases then uh, inter uh, i mean phases of uh, phase timing should also be there i mean are that to, is also you mean under one operation only right yeah under under a specific operation let's say there are multiple phases yeah so nice. so see uh, see if there are 2 4 5 whatever number of phases all of them are being executed on one resource right so this doesn't happen that you loaded the you loaded your job onto one resource for that one operation you are not able you are finishing one activity then waiting for some time and so on right this is about the resource consumption perspective i mean that's that's why it matters to specify that okay i am taking out the job from one resource and sending it to the next resource so now is there a gap because i am going to consume but when, okay. once you are onto one resource only it's it's the same thing correct Yes, yes, yes. Got I it. mean, this is Got yeah. It. This is mainly from the resource mm -hmm. consumption perspective. How much time you can wait in between? Okay, okay. Fine. So that is where we are. We have set up the PDS. Okay, and uh, it was quite superficial because, and that I cannot go any anything beyond uh, that, uh, frankly. why because there are so many fields here so many things here which not even multiple customers are using only 20 25% of the fields and possibilities are using if you go into very complex sort of scenario for example a aircraft manufacturer right so the aircraft manufacturer has some structure like this it has got say take an example aircraft only right so it will have one pds which says the aircraft full aircraft under the aircraft there are left wing right wing tail head fuselage which is the middle part and so on so there will be at least five different pdss which belong to the aircraft so what the structure could be okay it could be pds 1 2 and 3 for all the bigger components within the aircraft because all of them get manufactured at different places correct 6 for example so once we have a aircraft pds it will have one operation which belongs to left wing another for right wing third one for head tail and so on each of this operation will have its own component as an outcome correct because when we say left wings operation in in the pds of this aircraft it will have the component called left wing right that component will be available at the end of that operation so you will have end 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 sort of uh, um what was it uh, offset end end sort of offset to that operation correct now for the left wing itself there are around 1000 components so it will have its own pds okay that pds needs some other components in itself right each one of them so it will have another one so my only intention to explain you that this is the simplest form of pds that we are looking at if it is like a chemical manufacturer so on you will have just one level of pds but if you go to the detail level uh, for example a very very complex chemical manufacturer or very very complex aircraft sort of uh, manufacturing there will be 1 2 3 4 whatever number of levels of pdss that are there correct and they are here represented based on this so where is it if you open this pds for example okay if you open this pds now it has opened here correct so let me go in here new one 
correct so that pds once it is open it will have a list of bombs here correct under the bomb or under the component there will be one section called assembly that assembly shows this sort of symbol now somebody uh, this is not my production version so this is somebody else earlier and he has created a assembly bomb it means that upper section we are able to see here is the first bomb okay let me reduce the size this is the first bomb under that bomb there are two components this is output component this is input component but even the sg124 here is the left wing so the left wing itself has another level of components from different pds so that would be represented as assembly bomb okay so you click here correct so that would just try to load the assembly bomb that that so second level pds now there are two options either you can replace the existing list or you can append append the existing list with the new results if you append then it is very complex to understand so i'll just replace it and execute so it will load the bomb for the other one so only point of telling you this is there could be several levels of pdss correct and then how does it impact our plan order is you create a plan order of header that would generate dependent amount for second component that would third level pds that would generate plan order for third level pds and so on so this sequence continues correct fine so i was talking about a concept called assembly bomb okay so basically what i wanted to say is let's go to the pds hello uh anil yes, even this no. is which this is also blank you cannot hear anything yeah no i just kept quiet because there was a aircraft going above my head uh, on my uh, <laughs> place so i just okay. kept quiet yeah. but this is fine but uh, henceforth uh, i will not move from the place actually i think sometimes that wireless signals disturb okay so it is curto simu and uh, what is our finished good is this one we are loading the pds correct so the explanation that i was giving was about the assembly bomb okay could you could you follow at least a little bit before while i was explaining earlier assembly bomb yes thing. yes uh, i have just followed all through the it's just uh, when you are speaking the last line of that uh, we uh, uh, yeah. okay okay no worries yeah, i was about so, to ask about that uh, uh, since you have a pressed that button right so this is also got some phantom assembly right so is this is it the exactly. same thing you are explaining or uh, Yeah. Exactly same thing. Exactly same yeah. thing. So see, okay. I was taking an example of aircraft, right? So imagine yeah. FG one twenty six is an aircraft, correct? So the aircraft will have multiple components. One will be left wing, right wing, tail, fuselage, and all. So there will be a PDS. Imagine you are in the aircraft manufacturing industry. So there will be a PDS which says this is the aircraft, and it would need left wing as a component. There will be right wing and so on and so on multiple. Okay. So this is the left wing. this will be one higher primary pds under that primary pds if you click on the left wing there will be an assembly bomb so there will be second pds for the left wing if you click out there it would ask you to either replace or extend the list you know just to load that same thing i'll replace it go in and then it would show me that the components required for the left wing right now this is a error pds so nothing is in but left wing will, will have multiple components now aircraft being so complicated structure that even the left wing will have its own phantom bomb the phantom bomb would be the third level pds out there correct so that is how a very complicated customer or complicated business line gets implemented and that is ppbl ppds is quite capable of handling that so two three levels of pds especially for say car i don't know probably car is not so complex to manufacture so it may not have but aircraft for sure because a lot of things are still done hand, handled manually out there right so they have multiple levels of pdss that was the structure okay okay and yeah. and also and like uh, there are single level bomb and multi level bombs so it directly impacts our pds only right so like how this this is the is yes, this yes. is exactly the same thing right this is okay. a multi level bomb thing that yeah, i multi level only yes correct and then it automatically gets created because sg121 is a component of one of the bomb but this itself has its own components also correct you might yes. need to produce yes. produce produce right correct so okay. uh, you know on this line one quick example and i i'm not supporting or denying anything but have you heard about this group called adani group 
in India. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it has risen phenomenally recent times, right? After the yeah. COVID, he became the second richest guy in the world and so on and so on. Yeah. So the business strategy that this guy has implemented is he manufactures something his main business line is something else right adani manufactures i don't know what they have shipping and they have uh, ports and con- all those things correct so they will have one bomb for example to produce or create a sh- shipping dockyard or something correct it needed another component that which is cement cement needed another component it's called phosphorus sulfur and blah 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 whatever would be the components correct so the strategy that this group has implemented is if they need a component second level component just pr- buy that company who is producing the component so they own that thing so they started owning the bomb of that if they needed any other raw material for that buy that also so you know recently they purchased this uh, company called ambuja cement also correct because they have lot of ports to be manufactured in aircrofts air- airports and also this dharavi redevelopment lot of projects which are construction related so i don't want my component to be dependent on somebody else i will just create get, get that company also correct so just the purpose of giving you this example is that guy wants to own the end to end bomb of his finished good his finished good is something else but he is also owning a sulfur manufacturing company why because it is somewhere at the phantom assembly of his own uh, entire supply chain or finished good right and that's what many people do you know if you start owning uh, start owning the bottlenecks in your supply chain you own everything correct because electronics manufacturing especially the chip thing now entire world has assembly lines for uh, laptops and uh, all other things and robots but they do not own the semiconductor and that's where the bottleneck got created by china during covid correct and if you start owning that if you diversify that then you have no problem you produce and you do it same thing is happening with india now with this um, uh, war right they are bombarding lot of uh, ports with uh, ships with wheat in ukraine correct india is the only country who won't be suffering because we have all end to end supply chain of wheat in india we can, we can control the prices ourselves so just with, with some real life examples you should also try to own your uh, uh, end to end bomb and on that line just a two minutes of pause i will advise you to read one book that book is called total ownership okay exactly total ownership or 100% ownership okay let me find that but yeah uh, sure it is by ownership. Uh, have whom, you read uh, that whom it is no no it is by whom it is written i mean to say like the yeah. author then we will be able to find it maybe it it is written okay. by one of the marine commando of uh, united states who was deployed in iraq okay so that book is about um, uh, okay. just, i will search it more. yeah some name some ownership name extreme ownership my bad extreme ownership so this guy has explained the concept and now don't think that i am going in way not explaining you something else while you are on to a consulting project you also apply this fundamentals of extreme ownership usually what we think okay that part is not my responsibility not my baby then i will send an email and majority of the times in it you will hear people listening to two things they will either say that okay i am waiting for his email what is this waiting thing you know just like saying yes or no we keep waiting for 8 days you will hear often hear people saying this things in the meetings also that okay i have sent it i am waiting for your confirmation so i have to own it i have to go ask approach and do it now okay these are life fundamentals that you should apply right from your consulting other thing is many times we especially indians we ask the customer that do you want me to do this do you want me to do that yeah this thing is fine because the guy is owning but unless and until that do you want me thing whatever you want to do is a fundamental change in the structure of the project you need not to you have to give him that okay we want to do it but we have got this option so you start owning that give him options that okay let these are the three options from my perspective this is better so that's how you propose your suggestions and then then because you are the right guy who suggests who who knows about the best possibilities in the thing right so always try to own things end to end always try to take accountability of things and that would separate you out from rest of the consultants right you don't want to end, end up spending your life just doing some back end configuration ticket aaya ticket solve and all you have to go up the ladder very fast correct and it's quite possible it's a overnight success age correct so unless and until you start owning things 100% 
nothing happens trust me so read that book in the free time fine so that's how okay. we are yeah. sure we have closed the master data right so what we did now is we bomb material routing etc etc everything is done here and then we are able to bring that to pdfs also and we uh, have closed the master data okay fine so now what next we need to go into module number 2 which is about demand because the master data is available we should be able we should be able to get into production planning but before that we should know what are my demands as an input correct so let us start with module number 2 in that case Uh, anil just you Pardon. before you start i just want to ask one thing that uh, since uh, in our curriculum there is one topic on uh, detail explanation on master recipe which we have you know get it added as a additional topic so yes. will it be like a continuation of this uh, setup or or like you will take it uh, separately so see I'm, i i no no that's yeah. a good question i explained in the first or second session that there are some additional topics at the end right but i am going yes. to absorb them throughout the training so we covered some bit of i would say 30 40% of recipe if there are doubts you can keep asking if i don't know i will explore and explain later right okay. but okay. we may not be able to dedicatedly go into those sections again because what i am doing now is if you know about something you know how to explore so we have this list right Right. of additional topics which are not part of curriculum but i think you should know about them also correct so we will focus more on them but it depends i'll i'll be flexible from the audience perspective if you guys want we can go in more details out there in those sections for listed topics we can go in there or else we can learn something new in the pds pds sure. so let us take the call towards the end but then be rest assured whatever those topics are right i am already covering as part of our regular things correct so where is our course curriculum yes. so the topics are saying detail explanation of master recipe master so recipe. because we can't wait for explanation of master recipe uh, now right we need to finish up master data and without recipe you can't complete master data so that's why i started but part early ppds configuration okay. now this is this topic is vague right when you see ppds configuration yes. what i did yes. as part of model version setup is config global settings that i'll be talking very soon uh, is config yes. right yes. Yes. integration so yes. this is like i can revise things out there but then mm -hmm. instead of revising uh, it's better i cover yes. up something new correct yes. there will be test well, also i'll yeah. yeah also there is one topic anil like i would request you to include in pp uh, that tools portion that is alerts Uh, I think that of has course. been missed out as a you know in tools and production planning right in unit number okay. five. I think that that got missed somehow. So no, no, it is already included from my side. I will not leave okay. a single thing which is okay. used ninety percent times on PDS PPDS part, and I will cover ten percent of whatever is actually required, and you need to explore about it, optimize that sort of thing. But for sure, I am covering. See. my fundamental is to go with the design thinking approach and design thinking doesn't end unless and until you give something meaningful to the end user and alerts is one of the most important thing he doesn't go in the system and just go and checking everything every day right he just takes action on where there are problem and that comes via alerts so i have included that as part of my uh, the, the presentation uh, i prepared yesterday okay oh, don't worry okay. it's in. okay thanks for the clarification okay. Okay. thank you sure No, no, but keep asking these questions. Your doubt, anything additional, it 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 helps, you know, because training is not only you learn, I learn as well from you, right? I have to improvise every day, so it goes on. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. so now I I need one confirmation from every one of you before we take a break and start with module number two. Is what is the status of your master data? If you are confident, you are able to do that soon. i will trust your uh, uh, confidence but in case very frankly tell me you are nowhere there and you have got challenges problems and we need to plan out something so let me ask one of them she here took a break already so javed akip what is your status of master data sir i will start so weekend mein where did you go nandi hills or lonawala 
no sir my father in law health is not good he is admitted to an icu oh okay yeah okay but you are sure you would be able to create the master data on your own right yeah sir what uh, you are explaining i am getting that resource element and all creating the plant material i am writing down uh, things right and in general actually if you note down my product also so in case you are not able to read you can just make a copy of the resources and uh, raw materials that i have created you know at least to create a base and then explore the master data elements later to make it fix but uh, please try to do that today at least so that you also parallelly are able to execute your planning from tomorrow okay and schedule okay thank you right. good day and uh, okay. even alil uh, when we used to uh, set up i mean to say like uh, master data okay so yesterday i was doing it along with uh, one of my colleagues so uh, like we faced one thing about that uh, control recipe destination okay there was yes. a seed so it was not allowing allowing us to uh, what was the line uh, dhanushri that uh, uh, in in a, in the recipe in a master right? recipe when master we are recipe. creating a phase right. we right. have to create that control recipe destination Re destination yeah Re so, no so th there is one uh, available already right no for your plant it is available it for is our available. plants yeah. it is not available so uh, we even we have tried to copy. copied yeah you also we know, tried but... to copy it but it was not allowing us to copy from one plant to other plant so yes. we mm. get, so take the reference from... and create yeah. the same <laughs> as of yours we explored a bit that's how you yeah it, it's it's a base, great it's but... actually good <laughs> that we yeah. are learning through it but uh, because as so... we created a new plant we have to like more, do some more configurations like uh, we have to set up the company port for the plant then yeah, this yeah. but i am very happy that you chose that way to create a plant because this is see this is your chance that you explore about master data and learn something additionally also right and i'm sure if you simply copy my data in the interest of time somebody can do it i don't blame but if you have time better to do it explore you know try left right and center this system is for exploration to you and that's your master data so yes. that's very good i'm very happy i since we are back here and uh, i'll delay the break by 5 7 minutes but i want to explain you one additional thing about this control not that it concerns us but it's better that we should know so see this entire recipe its outcome is the plan order correct we as a production planner detail, detail scheduler we are uh, the end users of it but at the same time the company also has to pay attention to the finances correct so they have to know that okay if i process this operation how much is the cost that is called as the cost of the manufacturing correct based on the addition of all the cost that each operation is going to take they would determine that sometimes customers just place one operation to put the entire cost of the manufacturing process not putting it for every every operation that is here right they might want to do that and see without finances no company is able to survive if you just have technical knowledge if you just keep producing it's not happening right you have to decide that okay i am going to produce so and so in this month so what is my total manufacturing cost followed by i have to store that material then what is the total storage cost this has to be you know taken care of all these things go hand in hand so you cannot simply continuously produce in in the absence of storage allocation and in the absence of storage cost visibility and so on so that comes via this field called control key so this control key if you double click perhaps no not here but we have to go in spro so the control key has the setup that this particular operation that you have assigned whether this is a detail scheduling related or costing related and so on so usually what they do is if there are three or four operations they will enable this control key which will have everything of this base content and all but this they will enable this as costing relevant then then there is some configuration coming from the co and the fi consultants also so whenever a plan order gets executed automatically it will create the manufacturing cost and so on some customers they assign the particular control key uh, which doesn't have costing enabled so this is only for manufacturing purpose so they will assign this pi01 to all the manufacturing related uh, operations but they will create another control key that will have costing relevancy but the resource that you assign to that that doesn't get transferred to ppds then 
why because that control key that you assigned there is not costing relevant so uh, sorry is not uh, scheduling relevant so you make that as a costing relevant but not scheduling relevant so that did doesn't get transferred to pds to pds why i explained you this is perhaps your customer will have 10 operations but only three of them are available in ppds why even if you have done all the setup for the resources but the ppds pds only has three why because only those operations whose control key has scheduling relevancy they get transferred they stop them intentionally deliberately are not made transferable okay and if you go to spro control key i hope i can find it here define control key in the basic data okay let's go to the operation and from there maybe i thought i i we could navigate from here anyway so okay so it is what pi01 pi01 right process manufacturing so let's see what is in it so see this is scheduling relevant and this is costing relevant also but since it is scheduling relevant i am able to transfer that similarly the control key has side effects on plan maintenance and printing and this and that so all those things are governed from here why because sometimes you have some additional operations which you don't want to be printed finally or you don't want to be Uh, relevant for some other model so you just set that up okay automatic gr is one such thing so once the operation completes somebody does the technical completion and does the gr sorry goods received for that operation that it has finished but if you do automatic then it happens automatically in the system rest of the things okay so you should know about it because you might get confused ki there are 10 in s4 via versus 4 here fine okay mm. and then i was where i asked this question to yes wasim ali said your status of master data uh, uh sorry sir but i tried on saturday and sunday but uh, unfortunately they means lock my access so i okay. uh, contact with the rent yes yes lock so means i uh, contact I... them and then hmm. means uh, i didn't get access of it but uh, but uh, yesterday like uh, on friday it shows but we, when i uh, when i uh, open it uh, on saturday and sunday hmm. it doesn't show so i so, can't do nahi bhai bhai doesn't show it does it show you your id has been locked out or your id doesn't exist Man, means it show uh, you 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 didn't get access like this, that uh, page comes so i pin hmm. them like uh, What is your ID? Uh, G G S S I eight zero six five. No, yes, A P I D. Now, now, no, no, no. Uh, now I get to the. Uh, no, but wh what is your A P I D? I been G S A P something. Your A P I D should be there, right? A P I D. Yes, yes, yes. So what is that? G S A P B P D S one two three four. What's your ID? Can you uh, check? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I'm checking. In the meantime, next one. So, Jotsna, what? What about you? What about your uh, data? I haven't still started tunnel. I'll do it today. Hmm. But why couldn't you start? Ah, uh, I was actually Weekend. traveling to. Yeah, I was traveling, so couldn't carry laptop. Okay, but make sure you're doing it today. Yeah. And sure. uh, how confident you are to set up your data? Um. I'll do it because I also have recordings and I have noted a few uh, in my notes. So I think ninety-five uh, percent okay. I can do it on myself. I, and if I face any errors or anything, uh, maybe I'll contact you tomorrow. 
Okay, or you can contact all the other colleagues also because the earlier we finish okay. and come back with data ready, it's better. In any case, we can uh, solve the issues in call also. In the okay. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, could you find your ID, Vasimali? Yes, yes. What is it? Red S A P double P D six. D six. Red S A P double P D six. SAP WP D6, yeah. SAP PPDS 6, it is actually. Read it. <laughs> so, see, your ID got created on 21.7 only. Oh, last change on 21.7 Friday. So, your ID should be there. Maybe it could be a temporary issue because nobody has changed your ID since yes. Friday. Okay. So, on Saturday also, it was workable. Otherwise, if some your ID has any problem or password reset issue and so on, we should have latest update date. So, my only intention of coming down here is this is the access available to all of you, right? SU01, they haven't blocked, okay? So if SAP PPDS is your ID, and if it is not working, then talk to any of your colleague. They should be able to do a reset password for yourself, or if you, if you go inside in the change mode, you should be able to do in the logon data, you should be able to reset password or unlock yourself. There are options. If the ID gets locked, there is unlock button also. I suppose you are aware about this SU01 maintenance screen. If not, then just make familiar yourself. But please do not make any changes only for your ID. If it is locked and you are not able to access, talk to other colleagues in the interest of saving time. So there will be this button, correct? If you use wrong ID, wrong password multiple time, put the ID and this is the button which says lock or unlock. So you just press on there, it will unlock. If the password doesn't work, you can set up the initial password like this from here okay from your colleague so henceforth for next five days is the most intense training we are going to cover almost everything in the next five days okay in the next week we have peripheral topics so next five days is planning and scheduling planning and fill starting from today planning and scheduling so please try to do that parallelly otherwise if i ask you a question tomorrow you will not know it will be very tough difficult okay unless you have your hands dirty on the system all right, so yes. that's the way. So now we are going for the next module. Fine. So see, um, in case something is happening a little faster, let me know upfront. I'm happy to reduce speed because my uh, um, fundamental is to not cover everything, but cover whatever we cover in the best possible manner. So you understand that thoroughly, okay? We don't want to rush up because uh, the jack of alls, we don't want. Okay, fine. So now let us go through this second uh, module, which is says demand management, okay? So what does demand management is, okay? Anybody uh, remembers from day one, what sort of demands that we have spoken about? From the first session, I was explaining you about various demands that PPDS system has and so on. Nobody remembers or it's still the Monday blue. No, Josna, do you remember? Pardon me, Anil, uh, what were you asking? I just came back. Do you, okay, so do you, do you remember the types of demands that we have? We are going um, to start with the demand uh, module now, okay? Because okay. we are done setting up the master data. So before I go ahead, do you remember the types of demands that we discussed in the beginning on the day one, day two? Um, okay, customer independent requirements, plan independent requirements and uh, sales orders. Exactly, that's yeah. good. So basically, if you guys have the visibility of this, diagram again okay so these things happen in various different horizons correct but the demand forecasting or the demand horizon is right from today till end it means that this demand is sitting somewhere here in the operational horizon where actual production order is being created it is happening in a tactical horizon where the production planner is doing some sort of decisions based on higher lower quantities and so on and it is also happening during the strategic planning horizon where somebody is deciding whether I need to create a new warehouse or a plant in one in country called India or Southeast Asia and so on, correct. 
so that is why this is important and we should know that everything starts here so it also means that if i am producing something in week 1 it was at some point in time it was there in the third year's quarter four so my demand was still there it subsequently keeps moving 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 roll out and sometime it enters into week 1 where the demand gets converted into production order and i do it but in this due course the demand also changes its size shape and form and feature it was forecast at some point in time subsequently it came down so somebody converted that forecast into a customer independent requirement or a plan independent requirement because that, that is kind of a forecast on s4 that is still not a sales order and when it enters into nearby horizon you actually got a sales order from the customer and so you just vanished it that whatever demand you created forecast that you created earlier by means of forecast consumption correct that is how it is you know it is it is very logical step you forecast something long far in the future then at some point in time <coughs> you get a actual sales order against that forecast so you just consume the forecast via sales order because you already can plan for the forecast somewhere here just so that you can take your strategic decisions then you continued with that forecast so that you can take your tactical decisions and finally when you actually got a sales order you took your operational decision but you consume the forecast with the sales order does anybody have any doubt in this process yet because this is a this is such a basic fundamental and you sh you should know this end to end so any simple doubt if you have just raise it now i may not be repeating it again so your silence is always my consent okay i i understand i'm teaching the best possible manner in this world so everybody is understanding okay Uh, Anil, I think two people has been dropped, unfortunately. Or I... now, so see, my intention was to explain you various demands in this module now. Correct, and there are various sorts of demands. There is forecast, there is customer independent requirement, plan independent requirement, there is sales order. So four types of demand predominantly that we have. Correct. So what happens is in this end-to-end -end flow, you first of all do a forecast somewhere far, far away in the future. Okay. that forecast subsequently gets transferred here so as you come closer to the nearby horizons right the execution sort of horizon operational horizon you i mean it depends on sub customers some customers would keep that forecast as it is it would come near you would get a sales order against the forecast so the sales order would consume the forecast and done you have already created a plan order against the forecast so now that plan order is taken over by the sales order because sales order is kind of replacing the forecast you know the concept of forecast consumption right so it is kind of replacement of that forecast via sales order this flows some customers do the forecasting for long future that forecast subsequently keeps coming so while it comes closer in the tactical horizon some have a habit of you know creating a plan independent requirement or a customer independent requirement instead of the forecast okay and delete the forecast so that remains here you still have a plan order of equivalent quantity and slowly slowly as it goes near to the operational horizon you again get the sales order replace the for sales order with whatever that plan forecast that you created and ultimately you produce against the sales order so this is a universal truth okay so i'll show you how to create either a cir or pir but majority of the times in this session we'll be focusing on creating the real forecast because we have an advantage of ppds system which is a planning system so in planning system you can create forecast if you are into s4 then the master data is called plan independent requirement or customer independent requirement so we have the flexibility of using the high end system why should we go for the old end right so that's the thing so today now since after setting up master data we will first of all validate if my, my master data is tangible legitimate rather not tangible but if it is a legitimate master data it means that everything is set up correctly and am i able to use it as the first thing second is we will create start creating some sort of demands in the system okay so uh, i will before you proceed like uh, can you uh, can i ask uh, you about the forecast uh, consumption logic i mean you know uh, like the way you explained earlier so that will be the only thing or there could be some more i mean the uh, we predicted right according to the uh, trend and all and as and when a sales order comes uh, uh, so forecast will, uh, will get consumed right like how Correct. how it should be uh, i mean uh, mentioned in the system i mean to say in the in the product view like how it will be shown 
like the forecast like let's say the forecast gets consumed so mm. okay so, uh, so that's that that's part that i'm going to cover up today anyway don't okay. worry so good that okay, you okay. added an additional okay. flavor so i'll add one peripheral information out there fine yeah that's fine that's so bad. okay yeah. i mean uh, you you're right in that way i'll show you practically but whatever theory i explained that is universally true that is true even irrespective of your uh, software that you are using forecast consumption logic that i explained backward forward this comes fundamentally from the supply chain fundamentals from asics okay asics is an organization it is called uh, some international organization for supply chain professionals okay that is called and they they also have some certifications for supply chain called cpim right then cscp yes. certified supply chain professional okay. so if you are interested after this go and read about those certification if you crack that you will have much much value in the supply chain world okay yeah, and that yeah. yeah correct so try to get yourself you know sap certifications you can do but if you are not from supply chain background go and read about or prepare for the cscp sort of certifications even if it mm -hmm. is costly invest on yourself okay and uh, yes. you will have you know one en additional engineering degree of uh, supply chain plan with that i would say fine but then <clears throat> demand okay so the first thing that i'll do is i'll go to a transaction called rrp3 this is a regular transaction that most of you must have used this is simply the product view transaction or anybody is seeing this first time everybody has seen this right and the same mm -hmm. product view is also available here also product view transaction in our says you can come down here i am comfortable using in the back end i'll be here so in the product view why i came here is i need to be sure that at least i am able to load my location product so that i can create demand for that correct so if there is some problem in setting up transferring up then this guy doesn't load because this is showing me what is my production version and sorry planning version and if i am able to load this correctly or not this is fine it is now by default showing a pptds horizon line which is on 2110 can anybody tell me where from is this coming this is a boundary this is not an element of demand or supply this is a boundary so this mm -hmm. says pptds horizon 2110 yeah where is it coming from from the product monster the mat that was, was where we Have the PPDS horizon. That is Dhanasri. Yeah. So uh, this is PPDS horizon, Dhanasri. Again, mm -hmm. uh, I am sure you are telling based on the APO experience uh, or APO uh, understanding. But there is one simple change in the S four Ana PPDS is the PPDS horizon is not in the master data. It is at the production planning version level. See. i can go from here also to the product master by the way they here is the product master so no need to go separately via transaction so this ppds horizon here it is roughly 2110 minus 247 so this is like 3 months right 3 months is roughly 90 days so if you go down here to ppds tab you do not have the option of ppds horizon i mean ppds horizon option is there but this is zero you cannot change it here this field is just like somebody forgot to remove ppds planning time frames option is here you are still able to change it via s4 and the value comes but the ppds horizon if you are into apo ppds you can change here and you can have different horizon to different location product but in case of uh, s4 ana ppds this comes via the Production, the model version management transaction. So you define the horizon at the production version level. Okay. Remember this. This is the difference. So this is the 90 days that is coming. And now I'm going to change it from 90 days to 990 days because I want kind of infinite. Okay. Got it. This is a fundamental difference. So PPDS horizon is the one. which defines that if you are going to run some planning engine on top of this particular guy okay if you are running say ppds planning then the planning only runs till ppds horizon 
it does not run beyond that so even if there are demands and supplies after that it does not take the into consideration so this is kind of putting up a boundary this is especially good for apo based things because in apo you have a one side ppds another side snp or if you are in the ibp one one side ppds other side ibp so that time we say 3 months ppds after that 9 months or 12 months or 2 years is snp or ibp so you separate that out so that snp does not interfere with the orders within ppds and ppds does not interfere with the orders in S, uh, snp correct so you need not to actually define a boundary of the jobs so now i increase it to 999 days let us refresh and see this date changing ideally which is not changing it is okay let's go back or maybe because it was a model version change so i may have to log out and log in yeah so see now it is still 2026 right so it means that whatever demands i'll be putting up up to this date my ppds should be able to accommodate them correct so that's the fundamental difference ppds horizon definition at generic level in s4 ppds versus product layer, location product level in this case okay okay so all the products uh, in uh, like which are the in like all the materials in the this version will have the same ppds horizon right same 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 there is a there is a logical explanation why they have done it this way because this ppd system is other than the planning system now there is no snp here this is a s4 ppds correct so there is no chance of interfering of jobs okay so that is why you can apply it at once there there was separate you know you had to separate that this product is only snp plan these products are ppds plan okay on top of that every location product may have different snp horizon depending upon lead time correct some products are longer lead time so the snp horizon has to be longer and ppds horizon has to be even longer so something like that so there was a need to separate them based on every location and its corresponding lead time okay Just think logically here there is no snp at all your whatever you are planning it would just get planned within ppds correct so that is why mostly you will find this horizon to be kept as 999 days or even longer so that everything gets planned under ppds in this case okay that that's a simple logical explanation otherwise there is no technical uh, background behind it fine okay so that is about product view ensure that before we go into demand creation your product view you are able to load correctly okay now come to the plan independent requirements we are going to create all of them okay we are going to create pir cir and forecast just for demonstration purpose i'll show you all of them okay so this is 117 i don't know if i can cover up the ppt or but the ppt has just the explanation of it okay or else i can directly cover the theory part and then when whatever time permits we will go in here what is required in this uh, ppt is to go over this demand requirement strategy which are basically governing whether it is a mto or mts and all those stuff okay get type so i this is here okay let me show you three types of demands that are in system okay first one as per this ppt is plan independent requirement okay so this plan independent requirement is exactly similar to forecast it is not forecast because forecast is a category that is ppd specific so this pir thing is from s4 thing okay so before the forecasting and all those complex modules came into being pirs was the game correct how do we create pir is go to transaction call md 61 i guess as usual i am weak in understand remembering name but it's md 61 yeah plan independent requirements you just have to specify material plant okay date range starting from today till next one year enter okay this is as simple as that so now month 7 month 8 and so on now i have chosen month as a granularity i could have chosen i think uh week also or any other thing as a granularity at what level i need to put in the forecast so i've got all the formats available month is fine for me for now okay here i can simply put some demand quantity okay now important point to be noted here is this is just the fake demand there is no specific 
peculiar characteristic of a customer and so on so i can put this for anyone this is just for reservation of my capacity because against this there will be plan order created so if say 100 year 100 year 100 year right and save okay you can keep on putting for whatever duration you do that so this gate got created as a plan independent you can go back again this 100 is still there correct and then if you and remember one more thing in the spro there are some settings to transfer one type of object um, uh, i mean um, transactional data element and other type so we have enabled a plan independent requirement there okay settings for data transfer and we have got this where is plan in yeah here is the plan independent requirement right? so it is already enabled it means that my data should have flown already so as a precaution i'll just see whether there is any queue stuck and just just for fun okay i'm sure there may not be so nothing is here now go back to your rrp3 and refresh so see i have got three forecast requisitions it we are calling them fc only but they are plan independent requirements 100 100 and the three quantities they are represented at minus negative so these are all my demands okay once every month and by default i think it is putting on the first working day of the month i think july month first day was saturday right so monday it put and then first of august is working day similarly first of september is friday yeah so it is putting on the first working day of the month okay any doubt okay now similarly i'll create a customer independent yes but to to explain to you and i think md 81 is the transaction for cir yeah create independent you know this is not md 82 what is it let me search somebody do a google please and uh, tell me what is the customer independent requirement transaction customer customer let us search no oh, it's it's md81 md81 only but i was in md81 only right this is md61 is yeah. pir and md81 is pir ah uh, uh, okay 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 so perhaps okay i i this is the customer requirements only man i forgot i did not see fine so requested delivery date is what my day format fine requirement type let us put some requirement type which is because see the difference between pir and cir is pir are generic but you use the customer independent requirement in case you are operating in a mto type of scenario where the uh, planning that you are doing is very specific to a customer one sales order that's there for one customer you would create a customized product you know again a aircraft example for a aircraft you will create swiss airlines you will create one type of aircraft the color is different the bomb is different and for indian airlines you will create a different type of aircraft so you cannot cross do them now in a aircraft industry it is mostly done based on intention to buy basis just like air india put up around 800 planes order recently to boeing right last year on this year so that is not actually paying them entirely when you have a sales order you should also agree on some payment terms and conditions correct or in many cases you do on amazon you pay on the spot or you do a cash on delivery so because the orders are 800 aircrafts each aircraft is coming around 50 billion dollars or so so it's a billions of dollars of order you are not paying them on the spot you are doing some sort of you know intention to buy agreement so they the moment they give you intention to buy it is a verbal assurance that i am going to buy so these guys start planning for that because aircraft plan order itself is around 8 to 9 months it take 8 to 9 months to manufacture i have seen that with my eyes okay and it needs lot of components so you have to give order at least a year back to uh, this guy rolls royce to produce the engine for that and so on so you need to literally plan so it is not based on a sales order but based on intention to buy which are cir and the difference of cir is you do some configuration or you assign something which is specific to the customer then and then it is able to pick up the same bomb that the customer belongs to 
there is no independency here just like see a pir okay now that configuration part i am not aware but let's see if we are able to find it i'll just do some delivery requirement delivering plant is my 1010 and let's go in okay so here it is i specify a material let me do that 100 and i if i if it is about two items then i can specify multiple items requirement type is what is this 031 order requirement okay requirement segment is no requirement segment order quantity is again 100 okay this is sales unit yeah so sometimes you have manufacturing unit base unit and sales unit all of them are different you know can someone tell me the why there could be different units for base unit of a product manufacturing unit or production unit that we saw on the scheduling tab in the product master or the sales unit what can be the reason behind having different units here base unit of the product manufacturing unit of the product and sales unit of the product why can they be different i have explained this now half monday is gone now you guys need to answer me logically come on have a habit to speak up open up your mind always so see base unit is across the company whatever is common unit that you assign to the product because everybody in the under the company or your top management is looking at it uh, from the base unit perspective that this year we are going to produce these many quantities in this unit for this product manufacturing unit is the area where your factory is located so maybe for the europe you have got a planning entity planning person who is doing a base unit based planning but when it comes to actual manufacturing maybe the guy who is at the shop floor is different country germany guy is planning and belgium guy is manufacturing so some unit which is valid in the other country that becomes the manufacturing unit and similarly sales guy so maybe manufacturing happening in belgium but the sales guy is in india he is giving a sales order so the sales unit can be different that is followed in india kg versus pound right kilometer versus miles so country wise some units are different right i mean they not units are different they have a conversion but the unit understanding or their way of operation is different so i am not changing sales unit here plant is same okay and bomb explosion number so i think this is the configuration because we have a different bomb for different customer right so you might want to assign a specific bomb to this particular aircraft that you are selling to swiss airlines let me see if we have any data and doesn't matter so i'm going to leave it blank i don't know if it will still be able to transfer or not but point is you know about cir differentiation right you are able to differentiate between customer to customer okay and then save this okay so this is the number is 50009 it has been saved you can modify this later but for now let me see if it has flown to a ppds it hasn't flown cir is there a q i i mean frankly i haven't seen cir being used for ppds because you know if you have a cir based planning right then you know that how much is the quantity because cir is as good as a sales order correct so in that case you don't need to do a planning in ppds whatever order is coming that plan order simply you need to bring to ppds and do scheduling on top you are not doing a planning when i say planning it is like quantity based thing right 200 is required here so i am planning for 200 plan order but when there is cir it is almost similar to sales order and that is why perhaps they haven't transferred this and i am not able to see that here but i mean if if you ask me they should have transferred it even if it is not required logically but let me see if there is anything that i missed to update and it's not transferring and in the meantime can somebody check in the global configuration if there is a facility to also send cir in the spro i got this one 31 so 
So this is the wheels. Maybe let me assign a bomb explosion number to it. Mm, two number was there, right? Entry two does not exist in SNUM. So this is something else. Is someone checking? CIR entry in the global configuration. No storage. Guys, you are actually. Yes, Anil. Yeah, yeah checking, Same. right? Yeah, please. So do we have any other setting? There is no setting actually. And since you are not going to create a plan order, it is fine, but still I would like to see because I don't want to see a distorted view where only plan orders are shown, but the demand behind it is not shown. For some reason this is not transferring. Is it the same product I created the PIR for? Where is the product? 100 pieces, wheels, a material is 100. See, this is the problem, right? I gave 100 as a material. FG 126 is the material, isn't it? You guys are not yeah. paying attention today, see? 100, I mean, this is a unfortunate that even the product called 100 was existing, otherwise it wouldn't. <laughs> so let's change it. Do it whatever he wants. Okay. And now come back here and see. Uh, see, now the CIR came. It's okay, Shikshidish. So now it okay. has come. Yeah. yeah. And now so we you, can see you that. You only I'm... changed that base unit. No, 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 no. I, I used the wrong material previously. I oh, used the okay. material number 100. So quantity I put in the material space. Okay. Yeah. So now you have got forecast. You have got independent requirement on that particular day when you put that up and you got forecast also. Correct. So this is the concept about having you know plan independent requirement customer independent requirement and so on however the third type is sales order correct so we might want to create a sales order but that is that will come later because once we create a sales order we would be able to easily see how the consumption part is happening okay that is possible here on the screen but before that let us create a forecast of its own so for forecast uh, who hasn't spoken sriari what are, how do we have a forecast in a planning system? Shri Hari. Uh, sorry, Anil. Uh, how do you? How, how can you have a forecast? What are the ways of having forecast? Like, if you remember the initial first two or then, what are the modules that you use to get a forecast in this system? Yes, uh, we can get the forecast based on the invoice quantity, right? Say again, say again. I could not hear that correctly. Oh, based on the invoice quantity, we're able to do the yeah. forecast, right? No, invoicing, when does the invoicing happen? When you're so done producing, know. right? Yes. But forecast is way before the production and all those things, right? Invoicing will happen when you're done with the goods issue, goods receipt and all those formalities. Yes, that's right. Yeah, but I'm asking about forecast. So you are today. Today is 24 July 23. You want mm -hmm. to see that in 24 July 25, how much I am going to produce. So for that, you will create a forecast. Correct. Forecast is literally a forecast. That word itself has meaning, right? So in that mm -hmm. case, in uh, do are you from some APO or IBP project? What no, is your no, project? No. Uh, so I'm into IFF DP SNP. Come on, DPSNP. you are from DPSNP. Uh, tell yes. me then, how do I get a forecast for a system? What, which module that you just said, those will yes, be giving so, me forecast? Uh, so forecast from de in a demand planning only. So uh, exactly. demand planning right? Forecast. Exactly. Uh, I mean, see, demand planning of APO or IBP, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have this facility of generating forecast over a period of time, correct? Yes. For yes. the planning system, they are the ones who are generating forecasts. When we say generate forecast, it means they analyze the sales history, the shipments from last two, three years, four years. And based on that, they predict the future. Correct. 
that is what yes. we call as forecasting the forecast yes right. remember demand planning is responsible for generating forecast okay in this context now coming back to the main topic in this context i could put forecast and i mean pir and cir but i do not have access to any demand planning or idp so in that case i will put some manual forecast how do we put mm -hmm. manual forecast so simply go on some date so maybe it is 10th of august 23 okay and mm -hmm. if you put a negative quantity of 1000 that becomes a forecast okay 10th of august doesn't exist or date format is wrong okay so i put 10th of august negative 1000 so that automatically became a forecast we still are calling it as planned independent requirement in the back end right it still gets the similar atp category because the category description say you can easily tell that even the pir that got created it has the same category fc and this has same category only difference here is only this forecast that i entered here is editable so i can make it 1000 to 2000 or i can select the line and delete also rest of them are created from s4 so they are not editable okay so let me save this forecast first and try to delete something okay so let me pick this up and delete it will say no valid order selected because i don't own that it is coming from the other system fine so this is the differentiation between both the all the systems okay any doubt so far or is it actually known to everybody and i am unnecessarily spending time here we can move on to the next topic no no it's not known uh, you mean to say that cir is editable and uh, here no. in the in the rrp3 is it or No, I no, no. CIR. See, whatever you create from S4 is non-editable here. Only the forecast that I created in RRP3 is editable here. Rest of the things are not editable. I can't even delete them because they got created oh. in S4. So I oh, need to okay. edit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you mean like like in integration part, we can say that in ECC, uh, okay, we create and it just shifts to APO, right? So we cannot edit there. So in exactly. that way. Yes. Correct. Okay. See, whatever that gets created in S4. apo mm -hmm. or ppds doesn't own that we are just the recipient of the data yeah then is a question no okay so now i will do one thing i'll select everything and try to delete then only the forecast that i created should go away see that forecast is gone now three independent requirements and one cir remained here correct i don't yes. want to save because want to explain you and see product view is the only screen that i am going to explain in many many details in fact we have a we have a section in the end uh, which is course curriculum right so we have this section right tools where product view planning table etc are here so i'm going to talk a lot about product view here itself not in those section there will be additional other tools that will come in that section but because we'll be using the product view extensively i have to explain you here because some of the concepts like that uh, forecast consumption and all they, they are coming from here so i'll take a pause here to explain uh, this screen in detail first of all whatever types of demand you have the demands are always in negative okay if you confirm some quantity of the demand say for 100 you are able to fulfill 50 so only 50 would remain so this confirmation confirm quantity will be the only quantity that needs to be still produced or done so entire 100 equal 100 1000 is 2000 is zero why this confirm quantity is zero do we have a, sorry uh, is it not saved right it is not saved maybe yeah, but this calculation i think this is happening yeah, on the fly on the fly yeah see after saving yeah, also it doesn't show yeah, yeah. it's not showing sure. there is no problem su supply anil i think i mean there is no stock or where it will yeah confirm consume na no, na no. so point is see, this 100 is the demand correct so Minus hundred itself is to be confirmed still because I do not have stock. Similarly, this is minus thousand is the demand, so minus thousand should be yet to be confirmed. Maybe there is some other meaning to this confirm one. Uh, that is why it is showing that APO PPDS based mm -hmm. demand is different. For time being, don't don't pay attention. I will hide it. 
for time being. Oh, okay. okay. Believe, uh, you mean to say that thousand is not coming in confirmation quantity available, right? Exactly. It yeah. should, it should be come as minus. Okay, one. minus thousand there. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, it could be a logic that oh. the order created in S4 mm -hmm. versus order created in PPDS. Okay, but yeah. if you Although see it is that, cumulating, like mm -hmm. the next next step to it, cumulative available quantity, it is getting cumulated, but somehow. Yeah, it's not showing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Probably it is just neglecting quantity coming from S4 because it is yeah. a APO quantity, right? So it takes oh, superficially. Okay. Yeah. But in availability from line one, you got 100 available. Oh, sorry, mm. minus 100 available. Okay. Chain minus 200 and so on. So you would do that. But Hello, in Andy, between you just put, you just put a decimal point here due to that. This is happening. No, no, no. Yeah. I did not put anything. This is coming automatically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I just put 1000. So it is coming automatically because that is the basic uh, setting of the system. Okay, See, okay. go to SU01 again. SU01. If you do not have SU01 access, go to SU01D. My ID is ZPPDS1. Okay. Go to display and go to, go to, go to defaults. So here is the decimal format which says 1.234 comma something so this is the format that is chosen this is the indian subcontinent format okay, okay that if you go to, the yeah if you go to america this will be one comma thing yeah, dot thing. so it depends okay it depends on what sort of setting or could be this is a us format mm -hmm. not india india may to be use decimal so the addition, addition huh? i thought that addition is in that manner yeah no it's not that yeah, okay. okay, then you got availability. So this column is required because we are going to see material requirement planning or a PPDS planning in some time in some next sections. So whenever this availability goes below zero, that time you need to produce something that is clear cut indication there. Now we haven't yet run the planning engine, right? So it is not producing. So everywhere it is a negative, but the logical way is the MRP engine has to start producing whenever we go on negative on the availability. If you, for example, if you create a stock or a plan order, some sort of supply here of 10,000 quantity, then all of them would be fulfilled. You do not need to produce anything. Then the availability will be in positive. Okay, we'll see that. And then last column is showing you surplus or shortage. So in this row, I have a surplus or shortage. So if it is a negative demand, then it would show shortage only, so negative. If there were Plus me surplus, correct. So in one single column, it shows you that. If you go in next, okay, start date, end date are coming only for the CIR. No worries, don't worry about it. We have periods here. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is first time happening. You need to select a default profile. Time stream is not valid for total display period. Hmm. I need to do this. How come I forgot about it? Never mind. So, you know, it is 11.32 and the resource error came up. So I will fix that now itself. I cannot delay it. What happened now is I am, I am going to display in the period tab, okay. But it is able to display only till 1st of September 23. It is not able to display anything further. Why it would have happened is because the resource that we transfer is not correctly generated within PPDS. So that is a peculiarity with the resource master data that anytime you transfer a resource to PPDS, it contains information saving possibility to the second. Okay, what is the resource? It, resource has capacity, correct. The capacity is like in one second on this day at 12.1 p.m. I will have this capacity, something like this, correct. The resource is continuously available in PPDS. It is not like in one day I'm available, in another day I'm not available. Within that day also, what are the time zones that I, I'm available? And the PPDS resource is to the second available. It means that <coughs> to do the scheduling on the resource to the second level, I need to have so many partitions or granularities at the resource level. Are you guys able to follow this statement? Yes. Okay. Basically, 
to store data to the second level i am creating partitions of the resource to the second level it means that if the resource is valid for say 6 months i am only going to create partitions for 6 months and i want to do that i don't want to create it for 7 month why because the partitioning and all takes lot of space on your server so unnecessarily why do you want to do that because of that what they do is they run one report every week etc in your projects also it should be there that only does a extension of that resource partitioning whatever blah blah availability by additional one month or they sometimes they run every day sometimes they run every week so if you are running every week then it would just extend the validity of the resource by one more week if you run it every day it would just extend by one more day and so on okay so for the resources that we created it just gave us that error message that the resource is valid only till this date so let us run but now what is that program it is i think resource validity in one, in the ppt at one of the place it should be there but i i don't like to remember names so resource cons check or something like that cres create okay yeah so it is the keyword is slash ssbbo slash cr create cres create lc resource okay and i don't know how do you want to remember this but i just remember based on the keyword cres is create resources create resource live cache of the resources right you can remember any of the keywords here but if you execute it it will ask us for the resource correct so my resource is w star 1020 star correct just want to extend my own resource first of all you can check the existence of the resource if you can also go and ask him to save directly and you can say save resource to the live cache so if you go for the third one it takes care of the previous three also anyway okay so now <coughs> let me execute it okay so all these resources my resources are here right for the plant and they are available if the time stream is not there it means they are not so let me go and check the time stream up to what date so it is 22 to 6 up to 17 724 so it is available on loss for a one year horizon okay now this got generated if it was not existing it it had just generated it means okay so ensure that this is happening okay and you are running this job every uh, month or so in the third option of saving the non existing cvc this saving of the selected resources this is done one more thing i want to see res01 let's go to the resource so there is something called as time stream availability of the resource at the bottom yeah this one 30 days and 360 days okay so i never set that up right this is by default setup one year okay at least you know 30 days back from today and 360 days from tomorrow so the moment the resource gets transferred it is automatically extended to this period that is why the time strip was also for one year i guess or it because of inconsistency did not generate and something happened right i can't comment on what kind of inconsistency stopped but at times you would come across a situation that your project has not been uh, has not been set up by a good uh, consultant and so this time duration is only like 4 months or something like this okay or if someone is using a snp and ppda structure so for snp if the horizon itself is 4 months is also generating the resource for minus 30 days to next 4 months and so on and he forgot to enable the job so very soon after the fourth month becomes first month your jobs will start failing why because the jobs the scheduling jobs are trying to check the resource but the resource is not valid so with the shorter duration here and with not scheduling the job it is very easy to find the issue because you definitely your job, the scheduling job start failing out there okay this thing you can change also minus 32 plus 360 etc okay this validation but now i have generated the resource now let me go back to rrp3 and see whether i am able to load this thing for longer horizon if i cannot there could be other inconsistency again yeah it is still it did not give me an error or did it 
yeah it did not give me an error this time but it is loading only for four months so there has to be some setting somewhere which is showing it to be loaded but now it did not give me an error did you notice i went to change mode so it means that the resource has been created in the back end for longer horizon let me see if the time horizon specification is here used to be somewhere i it is not there because i think my last plan order is for first of september uh, sorry Twenty twenty four. Okay, some demand of twenty twenty four. Now it should show me that, correct. But I should not get any error because I have time stream not valid for. Acha. Now it is giving error for W testing resource. You saw that. This is not the resource one that is required for me. W testing is I don't know which which resource is this, but it its validity should be extended as well for ten months of horizon. for now i'll neglect this why because this is not my resource i am not going to use this resource but in reality you can't say that when whatever plant you are operating on the detail planning and scheduling you need to ensure that all the resources there are like that or else just remove this resource or delete this resource from the plant so i will use that deletion part okay or i will remove this resource from the model or version whatever is possible w star testing <clears throat> okay this is the one right so go into change resource select the resource and there is a model assignment somewhere here uh or one second this is the resource right for resource there is no model assignment so how do i do this i want to delete this resource so i can simply is there an option to delete the resource there is no option because the resource is owned by the other guys right so let me go to model dependency and now i see the model assignment okay so i want to remove this resource from the model so that it does not interfere so this is the resource which has planning version 000 and uh, model click on the model assignment model dependent resource so i selected a wrong line it looks like select this select the line and say remove from model assign model delete from model so now this is no more part of my model so i am just hoping that the rrp3 assignment just does not take this into consideration okay hello you guys can hear me still right yes sir yeah okay. yes sir i think it just voice just broke for a moment so i thought okay <clears throat> so let's go to the periods now do i get an error see the error did not come now it means i removed the resource from model dependency instead of deleting it and i'm fine correct but the other thing is it is still showing me from till 2023 even if my demand i just added it for 2024 right so there has to be some time horizon here which i am not able to see but i am pretty sure not able sorry to say uh, something anil i observed something so before the the link 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 in yeah because elements uh, removing the resource uh -huh. from a model assignment uh, hmm. it was there our demand was there can you one please go back to elements <clears throat> okay ah okay i did not save that order save it yeah sorry 2024 yeah okay i'm so happy that you guys are paying such a close attention my day is made for today great Hey, again the error is coming. It's not valid for the total display period. It means even after removing it from the model, it doesn't help us. We need to delete that resource completely. Correct. So I will try it other way. Maybe it is a resource, so I'll remove the advanced planning relevancy on the testing thing. Okay, 
and see whether the resource goes out from PPDS. Correct. The resource hasn't gone. <laughs> this is strange PPDS. So now how do we delete it? Let us see, is there an option to delete the resource? Change display. I mean, it is it's dangerous sometimes. We have to have a methodology to delete the resource from system. Otherwise, at times it is a very difficult situation. You just buy mystically create something, but it, is, it still keeps popping up, popping up against the plant into your scheduling board. So this creates a distortion. So we need to find a mechanism to delete the resource. Here is the change more. Edit doesn't enable this. Go to the resource is still standing tall, but what about these delete resources? <clears throat> I think that SAP must have released the program. How to delete resource in embedded PPDS. We have it RES01 enter the resource. Okay. Then remove from the model that part we have done. Okay. Then he has an option of deleting the resource. We do not have. It could be related to see there is no button of deleting the resource. Ideally. It shouldn't be so complicated, so we should be able to delete it. But for some reason, do you see it on your so screen? It seems mm. there is still an issue, right? But not in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His screen is APO screen. This is a APO thing. Yeah. yeah. So um. Okay. Let me do one last thing. Otherwise, I'll skip this topic. I mean, that's not skip, but uh, we won't be spending time. CRC2, I'll remove the capacity because resource actually gets created from capacity in PPDS. So I have to see if, uh, yeah. So Can I'll we try to use the report CRES resource delete? Is there a report? Yeah, this is good. slash SAP APO slash CRES underscore resource underscore. Yeah. CRES delete resource or CRES resource delete? Resource delete. Uh, <laughs> Paste in the chat, then I found it. A resource model deleted is right here. It is uh, data different. Here is resource delete. Mm, I'm not able to. Can you paste it here in the chat? I'm not sure if it is there in this folder or not. Yeah, but we have this model assignment of the resource deletion. Generally, yeah. SAP may not be giving such a resource okay. because you know we can control it from S4. So paste it. Let me see. And it's almost the time. Yeah, it's not there. Resource delete. I think it was, it used to be in the APO world, but. Mm -hmm. Or oh, this is program only or a function model? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they so, okay, have missed. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so Keep never mind. We'll really just try one last thing. Like yeah. Now we can go on mute, Dhanashree. So your colleague is talking. So see, I have selected capacity because ultimately the capacity is converted to resource. So say, put cursor there and see deletion. 
this was capacity selected is basis for scheduling theek hai so i'll remove the scheduling part also scheduling was deleted fine then go to the capacity and i'll remove this if it allows me okay and now save and now let me go and see what has happened to my resource no, but i haven't i have removed the advanced planning indicator i mean both ways i am playing with this guy so i am not sure if it works see the resource is still standing tall and you know in the beginning i said i have to explain you the deletion part so this is how some issues are coming up in the sense that you are unable to delete something then even the product master deletion was not so easy until last release it was not getting deleted from ppds at all if you want to delete a location it was not getting deleted so the moment you remove the advanced planning indication we expect that it should be deleted but there were a lot of challenges out there correct so same thing for resource also and i think subsequently in the next releases sap should fix that okay never mind so that doesn't bother me coming back to rrp3 this is the period screen where it shows me what is my available quantity per day okay per week or what not okay if there is a forecast and so on so total requirement would be added together that day correct if there are plan orders that would be shown fine we'll see that uh, while we come down with some plan order creation so you will see a good picture you can also plot some graphs here okay but not that any someone is uh, actually using it there is some i mean not this but some some other section uh, which shows us the graphical representation of all those things color legends are also there negative is shown in red and so on so on okay but i'm sure uh, if you are into any apo project then people do not see because most of the information once are comfortable then it is available on this element screen so i personally like this one and mostly 90% of my end users also used to like this one but some other tabs are here like quantity so it will just talk about quantities plus and minus quantity so you know in what day what week you have got higher demand than the supply so this is like if you have used um, uh, this uh, ibp right so you can create easy templates there not templates but easy analytics there charts there where you can show total demand versus total supply so this is something similar but because it is slow because it has no flexibility of adding or removing any filter and so on it is only for one location product it has got no uh, value as such because if someone is doing analysis at that level that i need to see what is my total demand versus supply he doesn't want to do it for one location product he wants to do it for a group of locations for one entire location product and so on so it did not get so much popularized but yeah options are there in the stock you will see all the stock that is coming now we do not have any stock from s4 but maybe we can try to bring in something next time this is one important part the pegging overview okay so we have a dedicated section uh, in the planning which explains you about pegging especially for make to order make to stock scenario what sort of different peggings come into play and so on so it is important for you to know right now we do not have a demand and supply both only have demands so it doesn't show but pegging is kind of a relationship between both of them and that gets very well displayed here okay there are some settings on the product master which decide what type of pegging would get created so that will also come soon okay i mean i'm not leaving this i know what i am Uh, telling so it's not just like that i am pushing this topic ahead but it is there at one of the deeper sections so we'll be coming back here you know the product master and you know the forecast right so these are just the separation part right so what is the total forecast and so on but here comes the consumption related part in the forecast that was the question right shidish so what does it show yes. you is on what day what is my plan quantity okay but we have got some uh, we have got a requirement strategy which says that i'll be doing a forecast consumption okay and we have chosen forecast consumption of 100 and 100 this requirement strategy also i'm going to talk but for time being remember, uh, just understand one thing 20 is the thing 20 is the category which says that you can have forecast consumption based logic okay so it means product master says yes go for forecast consumption 100 week backs 100 weeks forward fine 
so this is the forecast okay if there is any sales order then the sales order gets allocated against the forecast so you are able to clearly able to see that what is my total remaining plant quantity so in case you have got 100 quantity of sales order here then 100 into 100 it would only remain 100 but for example here you are in 10th week and you put up a sales order of 10000 quantity correct that 10000 quantity will consume this 1000 first of all because we have backward forward and same day so it would consume this 1000 then it would go backward in consume 100 100 then it would go forward it would consume this 1000 and 100 because you have 100 weeks backward forward so if you have a 10000 quantity of sales order you will have remaining plan quantity of 10000 here rest of the things will become zero because the sales order would have eaten up all the forecast that is there in backward and forward so while the planning runs it would just consider that on 10th of august i have to produce 10000 quantity that's it rest of the quantities are eaten by the sales order and you can very well see that if you create a forecast uh, if you create a sales order on a particular day let me try to do that very quickly i'll try to create a sales order and see whether i am able to send it so we will stop with this uh, particular consumption part on a sweet note so order type is i'm not an expert into sales order side this is sd guys but we'll still try so this is a standard 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 order abo yeah now it's the problem i don't know what is the sales org and all so 10 10 only i'll try to use okay because my plant is that okay this is fine then put the material number this order quantity of 10000 okay and what is the date i am looking for it is 10th of august okay item segment doesn't matter where is the delivery information where uh, i put there, the date on the top on the uh, i mean yeah, request, requested, requested delivery, delivery date is there it's just uh, 24/7 right 24/7 this one uh, this is customer no no no, 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 no. below that this in, is the first line if you see sales. this rq del delivery yeah. date Okay, sold to party, shipped to party is asking me. So let me put up something here. Mandatory. Okay, but the job is done for the situation. If those people are doing the same, so we are not going to do it. Are you in office, Tanishree? Ah, yeah. No credit assignment assigned to credit control area. Yeah, these are the problems with SD thing. actually our background is catcher i mean the device yeah, she is using yeah, it catches very much yeah no it's fine i'm just kidding it it's not a complaint yeah. she even tried to fix it through is team and everything she just yeah. already you know tried all those stuff but yeah background no, noise for, yeah for background noise it's it's uh, it's you know it's a default setting in in, in her device only i mean this is some नहीं इन द टीम्स यू हैव एन ऑप्शन यू कैन जस्ट सप्रेस द बैकग्राउंड नॉइज या या वी हैव ट्राइड एवरीथिंग इन इट इज जस्ट या या एवरीथिंग वी हैव ट्राइड एवरीथिंग ऑल नॉइज सेपरेशन एंड ऑल द सेटिंग्स एंड एंड इवन लाइक शी जस्ट यू नो गॉट द टिकट क्रिएटेड गॉट इट अनइंस्टॉल्ड एंड देन इंस्टॉल्ड दोस ऑडियो डिवाइस ड्राइवर्स ओके सो इफ यू आर गोइंग टू यू नो इन्वेस्ट समथिंग ऑन इट so this is the headphone okay. that is such a wonderful headphone it's a bluetooth headphone and it, i'm not selling it here by the way i'm not giving mm -hmm. my affiliate yeah. link also but yeah. it, it helps to suppress the noise you know just the people walk walk to the washroom also with this headphone on doesn't matter i've seen okay. uh, my customers using okay. it the jabra evolve wireless headphone it's okay. Okay. little costly but not sure uh, how it can be achieved but in case possible sometimes okay but now which one i should select come on uh, is there a plan code here is there a company mm. code here is there an option to search based on the company code ship to mm. sold to city postal code country region nothing is here right how do i know so okay. this is tough Okay, we we may have to leave it there. We because it's not German plan, so I'll try. Three zero one 
to there also i think full last hey the message that is giving is no customer master record exists for this sold to party now these are customers only so we should have a customer master record isn't it so customer table is kna1 um, yeah yeah somebody has to say something so we have 183 customers right so am i not able to select one customer from here as sold to party is there a uh, is there a configuration to find it based on the company code so you have got name city postcode region streets hey, we have plenty of customers isn't it if it doesn't happen then maybe we can find that offline later see yes um mm. sure yeah okay there is one more option last try i know i am at the end of time but i'll go and check if there is any existing sales order for this plant okay yeah in and maybe in vbap yes vp ak vp yeah ah vp okay right so plant information will be in vbap i think you're right right it's not here but no we, we have sales order okay fine So let us find for yes, zero yes, one. So we have got some sales org information, and uh, is there a product here? AG plant. We have ship to sold to information here. By chance, do we know? Document conditions. Okay, fine. Another matter. I'll. Pa zero three. Okay, so this is the guy. Hopefully, we can use this. Okay, or else um, pricing procedure could not be done. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's a warning message. No, but it's stopping us still. Mm, Doesn't so, let me. Yes. So some config is missing, and unfortunately there is no way to create a sales order. So in PPDS, I mean. So what I'll try to do now is, I'll try to put my plant here, okay, and my product, FG one twenty six, okay, and change from twenty twenty three to it was it was what twenty four right August. Correct, na? No? I think yes, yes, twenty four eight August. It's tenth, yeah, tenth of August. Tenth of August, quantity ten thousand. And but plant, where is the plant information? I think it cannot be at this level. Yeah, exactly. There is no location of plant. The uh, mm. engine. A plant is yeah, here, it's right? There. It's, it's there. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Right. So let us copy this. and see whether it allows us to changes a schedule line with date already exists for item so i want to theek hai what is it 3320 because it's a history date it does not allow probably so we will get okay we will get rid of that second line okay so now let us delete it fine good and let's make it to 24 10 now just enter it once and maybe it will pick some other date you know it's not picking but this Usually is this is valid this. from date no i will will increase the valid from date to 25 yeah now it will allow oh, okay. okay this is the validity yes, 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 yes. and delivery date is my 10 8 20 20 24 the default it is not copying fine do whatever you want and save okay. hopefully it has now created a sales order and we should be able to flow it to ppds great okay yes. so let us see here in elements now it's taking this is some time there, uh... Okay, sales order doesn't. It's not the import. Cause requirement is there. 
Yeah, maybe a queue is stuck. It's maybe a old sense of yes. yeah. nothing is here. So it should and come out, ideally. Outbound. Uh, okay, that will is from Q1 also. I don't know. Right. Yeah, so there are some queues. Yeah, okay. yeah. Actually, we were not checking at that time in outbound, maybe. Right. But error creating inbound delivery for purchase order. So this is not the one for us. This is not. I think yes, yes. This is see, this is last year somebody generated this. Yeah, that's so the, uh, the, not this year. Star one. Okay. Maybe all of them are into error. In, in CCR, maybe you can try once quickly. You know. It's a good option, actually. You should know if there is any error. It's at least showing me sales issues. Okay, G126. 61010 and sales order and confirm. Yeah, sales order will be enough. Yeah, I did. I just select sales order. Uh, I don't know if it is actually a delivery or so. Let's see. Conf yeah. Okay, so there is one sales order mm. total, but it's not able to mm, capture yeah, that. Yeah, yes. Maybe it is so inconsistent because it was created so long back. So I think I have one more option to copy it from here to there. Um, Even if there are any sales order there, I, I, I think you can create with the reference. Exactly, order. yeah. Create sales order with reference like option, but I can't yes, find it. Yeah, it sits here. Create with reference. Create with reference okay. down. Yes. So what is that sales order? Previous sales order VA03. It is this one. Okay. Create with reference with order. This is the order. Customer reference sold to party. And yes. Okay. I think request for delivery data you have to do. Yes. So the ABO is the problem, looks like, okay. Anyway, I think uh, it's different. Let's see if we are able to create something. And if any one of you guys are able to create later, that is also helpful. We are already past the time, so we will stop for now, okay? Do one thing. Okay. Everyone, let us try about bringing in some sales order or so, okay, as a homework. And then we'll see very quickly, how does that forecast consumption happens? Because this is the place where you can see. Other than that, those of you who do not have their master data set up yet, please spend some time and get the master data created, at least from this level. A lot of guys were not talking today, but at least answer they were able to answer. So I have a confidence. Okay. Only thing is, you know, we are falling behind. We are lagging. So we'll have to compromise on some of the topics later by next week. And if you guys show the speed, then we would be cover up additional topics or talk about some philosophy later. Okay, that's what. And other problem is, and Nitin, please raise this also that people, if they do not join, then we may not be able to repeat things again and again because it's like a wastage of one hour tomorrow if we want to repeat from today. So we'll have to actually start doing new things every day. Okay, and so please, uh, so if uh, some of your colleagues are not here, so ask them to at least listen in, okay? If there is some unavoidable situation still, okay? So tomorrow, what do we do is if some of you are able to crack the code, get the sales order, we'll see how the consumption is happening. If I am able to spend some time, I'll be happy to do that, set up some sales order and that. So right, spend uh, some time there. Yeah. Did sales order uh, categories, right? Uh, I mean, A, E, B, zero. Like usually we I use think that's gig the, oh, or... It Who depends the... like which what well, okay. I mean, customer to customer, if you are creating deliveries oh. and also that's where okay. that's not my portray. So I just selected right. something which is logically true, but maybe okay. from your current projects reference, you are able to create a sales order. If you can create it for my product, it is even well and good. That's no issues or your product. That is even better, right? Because you can also 
try to think about the yeah, consumption. Try, maybe for tomorrow's okay. yeah, session. But then what do we do tomorrow is we go ahead with understanding. So most of the part we have seen, but what is remaining is how do you configure that thing, right? Whether it is a make to order, make to store, stock, stock. So that part comes via some requirement strategy settings at the product master. And that is where I'm also going to talk about the pegging part also, right? I said, I'll be keeping it aside. And then some part of stock. So one of the section, the demand section under product master, I did not speak. While we were explaining, I said last time that I'll talk about it later. And this is the time. But tomorrow we'll talk about it. What do the settings mean and how do they affect and so and so. Okay. So we'll talk about it. And once that is done, we are a little bit behind. Okay, where is the curriculum? So we are here somewhere in the <coughs> demand management. So ideally it was supposed to finish last week only, but never mind, we do it in a better way. Tomorrow, what do we do is once that part is done and demand is set up, we will start with the production planning activities where we will understand various types of heuristics that are there. Very important section, henceforth, okay. So types of heuristic, what type of heuristic you should use, how do you run the heuristic, where do you assign a default heuristic and so on. Because this chapter and the next chapter to that is like, how does the heuristic affects, how does the heuristic impacts or how do, how do the different master data settings impact your heuristic outcome? So all those things we are going to see. So my take is the unit three and unit four, I'm going to combine them each other because sometimes I'll pull up the topic because they are so related. One is about the basic settings of heuristic. Another is about utilization of those settings and then Towards the end of the week, we will go and go much details or deeper into the detail scheduling part. Okay, detail scheduling part. So do not miss any sessions in this week, henceforth. Even if you miss something in the next week, it is fine because by the time you would be a great, already a great consultant yourself, but do not miss the rest, next four sessions now. Okay, fine. All right, okay. so let us talk tomorrow. Uh, keep practicing, happy studying by the time. See you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.